Uh uh. Ask yourself. Uh uh. Do you know me? Uh -huh. Come on. Ha 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 ha. Honestly, no names. It was on with the Lords and the Shotguns. The Shotguns. Okay. Um. On sight. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> cats, cats couldn't see each other without some kind of funk kicking off. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um. I think because both both parties was trying to establish them, their regime. Right. You feel what I'm saying? You got a you got a Midwest uh, uh, stronghold, and then you got a West Coast stronghold, and both of them think that both of them thinking they the hottest thing that ever walked this earth. So it was just like, man, as soon as we see each other, man, strange as it may sound, when none of us from Cali, when none of us from uh, Chicago, right. you feel what I'm saying? I've been here since I've been here since I was three. So it's 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 like it ain't at, where you from is where you at, at the end of the night the influence that those two gangs had on this city was just terrible. Wow. You know what I'm right. saying? Cass is just looking at each other and ain't none of them gonna back off because at the end of the night we all told each other how to get down. Right. You know, I know for a fact I used to tell them little brothers, man, whatever it takes, we're gonna make it happen. And so when we got to fight each other, the other cats on the on our on my squad was calling them cowards. I'm like, they can't be cowards because we taught them how to get down. Right. It's impossible. If they cowards, right. we cowards. Right. You feel what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. And so that was the hard part. We, being C-A-N, yep. beefed with everybody in the, in the city. Wow. Like going from back in the day, we used to beef with the Bloods. Meet them at the Roller Gardens to fight. <laughs> uh, 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 we, we beefed with the Nike for Life from St. Paul. Wow. We beefed with the Vice Lords. Niggas that we cool with. Yeah, beef with them. Wow. Niggas always think we might sort of straight bombing all them. The Donnie, David, all the Lords. The niggas that's our homies now. Right. Beef with them. Beef beef with the uh um MCs in the projects at one point. Wow. So so yeah, and, it, and obviously with the folks and the Crips, that was, you know, that shit lasted so long. Right. You know. And what was crazy about that, especially with the Crips, was every time we was beefing, it was niggas that we used to be cool with. Man, she didn't beef with few bitches. I, I beef, beef with bitches. Niggas. I, I, I fought niggas. She bought, she niggas. Bought for I, I, I ain't never had no problem with bitches because they respect me all the time. They know how I'm coming. Niggas. I beef with niggas. I'm still on the nigga, but I'm still on the bitch. Right Straight up, and I'm going to go toe to toe with the ass. Any one of the ass, and they already know that. That's how I'm coming. Wow. I'm still like that to this day. It's in my heart. I was born and raised like that, but they just brought hey, it man. out of me. Fuck Caitlyn Jenner, nigga. This is Buck Wild right here, y'all. Hey, <laughs> fuck Caitlyn, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> it's like a family. They show me love off top. And I be about that shit, so, and they know that. I'm coming just like they is. So my rank up here, I'm coming just like the niggas is, and they love that shit. But they, brought, they took me in like family. Wow. I'm, I always feel like they my family. Regardless of what, no matter whatever happened, they always gonna be my brother. We beefed with the Southside motherfucking Bloods, man. Who I'm cool with now to this day, but when we was kids, it was, it was niggas like Night for Life, Bloods over South, man. Tyson mob niggas and, and you know, a few vice lords out here, here and there. You know what I'm saying? But me personally, I really not, I really haven't had a beef with really too many people, but a few individuals are amongst my circle. You know what I'm saying? So basically, you know, that's a gift that I've gotten out here. I've never been a vice lord, no folks or nothing. You know what I'm saying? I've always been what I've been, but I've always respected a person as a man first. You know what I'm saying? And that's the why, reason why I can go in the blood hood. I can go to the, the vice lord hood, the folks, all of them. You know what I'm saying? Because I kept it 100. And niggas that take niggas out, they, they you if you keep it 100, they gotta respect that. It's when you get involved in that fuckery and shit, and that's when you get gone. Blood gang over south for sure. That was our very first enemy. That was our very first enemy. Blood gang over south. Blood they cool out. now. I fuck with them now, but then they was our on site enemies. Um, Ari and they they was they, they, so they was some more on site <laughs> enemies. Um, really, man, I'm gonna tell y'all how we after we cool been, else? how we got into it, Arian. Blood gang, Arian, GDs, everybody yep. from the blue team. Yeah, but see, GDs was was enemies, but we had GD homies though. Yeah, okay. GD was enemies, but really back in the day it was really the blood gang. For okay. real, it was little cliques running around we used to beef with, but that was all north side beef. It really didn't go that far. Right. You know what I'm saying? But 
Our enemies was like the Blood Gang back in the day. I ain't gonna even lie. The Bloods was our first enemy. Then the CDP. The CDP was our second enemy. And they was on tight too, on site. They were called Chill Down Pocket. I think all of them became bogus. Almost all of them became bogus. Mm -hmm. Okay. But they was our them was our, our second on site enemy. But that was just that that, that was like on, on, over the time because I used to go to school with a lot of them. them you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, but we after cool we, in school. Not no more, not once we got into it. When yeah, we yeah, got into it, they yeah. came over, like I said, that was our hood too. They came over there, came over Geneva and them crib. Mm -hmm. Do Dirty Mouth, one of them. And from then on, it was on. <laughs> That's how we got into it with the Bloods too. It was Do Dirty. Do Dirty yeah. stole them from yeah. them little niggas. I was just man, we were so that. young. Man, them niggas was toting guns. I'm not gonna lie, the blood niggas was toting guns when we was yeah. young, nigga. We was young. We didn't Dude, they were still on the nigga. Remember how they used to wear them little uh, fanny packs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was just niggas, telling them we, about that earlier. It came out the fanny pack with a blammer. We pure and we pull off. Everybody dip. Then the RN. Man, and, and to be though. honest, we kind of got sent off by a female. Yeah. And that's how we got beef with the RN. For Keisha, smack yeah. cousin. Came up uh, <laughs> one day at school. She like, oh man, she like them RN niggas, man. Them RN niggas, they they screaming ruthless, ruthless. That shit sound cold. And they said they coming up to Harrison. So boom, we like they coming up to Harrison. <laughs> so then the niggas came up to Harrison. <laughs> niggas got the uh, Kenny King and uh, Mike went one on one. That was me and Mike. Nah, y'all went one on one too, but the very first fight was Kenny King oh. and Mike, remember? And then MR oh, stole yeah. on one of the yeah, niggas. Yeah, Dude yeah, already yeah, like yeah, hit him. Yeah, and yeah. MR stole on the wrong nigga when it had nothing to do with nothing. Right. <laughs> MR. MR's so funny too. Yeah. The niggas, when MR hit him, bam. He all You Dude ain't like, not him. Dude, MR like, you told me to hit him. Another thing I'm gonna say is Bentley, KB, is probably the most ghetto fabulous nigga I ever knew in my life. Right now he ain't the same nigga but when we was young. Right. That nigga was so popular with niggas hating on him and bitches liking him more than once. Uh, niggas, niggas done either pulled up, walked up and said, which one of y'all KB? Never seen him before in their life. Yep. But yep. hated that nigga, I man. That, that nigga was, was a ghetto North star, side man. Legend. That, that, North that side nigga legend. Wow. That nigga's a legend a for real. That nigga was a real star, a star right. man. Right. right. Wow. MR2. MR2. Yeah. MR2. MR2. Yeah. Not like not like Not like Billy. No. Not like but MR is too though. Yeah, MR2. MR is so I'm gonna give credit yeah. where it's due. KB yeah. was the first nigga. I know that was popping that thing, man. Man, KB was the first hey, nigga. Hey man, I know with, that with, had, with perfect that had game. Right. She <laughs> the only nigga with I know that was. Game, and, it, and you know we it was had. certain niggas back in the days that was popping man, that thing. Man, we had five bullets knew. in the gun. Right. You hear me? Hit four four shots. Hit they target, man. Straight up. And that was with a nigga up in first in a small room. Wow. That's a. So you know, I'm it's easy to shoot too. at somebody. But what about when he got a gun too? Right. 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 That's how, man. That's how, man. I'm finna. Y'all want to hear a story? I'm finna tell y'all. This is how hard the homies was back in the day, man. The homies is up at uh, North Common. This before. This before Cube really came C A N. He was fucking with us a little bit, but he wasn't all the way C A N. Him and Jeans. They're up in North Common. Folks come in. This, we had, we were beefing with folks because they had jumped one of the homies on the bus. And we had went downtown looking for them, couldn't find them. And all, all the CNs lived on the 19. That's how we used to meet up. Right. Just get on the 19, we'll all meet on the bus. Boom, so we, that's how we do it. Boom, everybody jumps on the bus, we go downtown, we looking for them. We don't find them. We get on the bus going home, it's a bunch of niggas sitting in the back of the bus. We don't think nothing of it. One of the little homies was like, man, that's them. I think it was Doughboy. Doughboy like that, that's them. That's the that's who jumped us. Right. So we go back there, whoops. Doe clap, clap on one of them. Doe was the first homie that clapped on somebody. It wasn't Billy, it was Doe. Well, it, it, it was Trigger. Yeah, Doe had that little, that little the blue shit ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 It means the, uh, I mean, the nigga try to take the gun to jump on off my the bus and run. Wow. That nigga try to take the gun off my hand. But anyway, uh, so then the homies, the folks, the folks catch the homies up at the park. Boom, first it's just a couple of them. They leave, come back like 20 deep or something. But in the meantime, somebody had, they come in the, oh, the homies is watching the, uh, the you know, they used to play basketball up in North Carolina yep, yep, and shit. Yep. Teams, yep. you know, organized teams. So they watching them play basketball, all the folks come in, bam. He's like, oh shit, boom. So they jump up, get on the payphone, start calling the homies. Me and Smack's over, over Tyra's house. Remember, we was over Tyra's house. 
We called Rob, we was trying to get our hair cut from Rob. We called Rob, he like, man, I'm on my way up to North Common. The homies just called. So we run up there. Long when story short. up there, they, they ran past. Oh, they running, coming yeah, back. They yeah, they ran past. Long story short, folks is deep as hell, 20, 30 niggas. Boom. They come in, they, they try to block the exit, right? The homies is in the bathroom getting themselves together. They come out. So one of these is acting all tough. So MR, MR like, <laughs> look at this, look at this Mark, uh, Puffing and puffing like he really was just gonna do something. So he like, nigga, we can kick it off, me and you. And Mark come out of his jacket. Pow, pow, fires on him all. He shook. He shook that left hand, <laughs> threw him Bro, off. Oh, yeah, yeah. Boom, but like I said, they're like 20 deep. The fight gets close to Jinx, he jumps in. It's only like eight of the homies, man. But that's just how real niggas was, man. How loyal and de devoted no, niggas was to they one they each they other. Right. All them niggas, so. we started jumping them. So after, uh, <laughs> after Jinx, Jinx and MR is rolling him up for a minute. They don't even jump in. One of them step out, step back in with a gun. Blam, he he tried to shoot uh, MR. MR yep. Click, it click, boom. Billy come out. I said the South Side was pretty much everything. Everybody. Everybody. You know what I'm saying? At one point in time, at one point in time, South Side, South Side got a little different history from other sides of the uh, Twin Cities, man. You know what I'm saying? At one point in time, every hood on the South Side funked with each other some way, some way. Right. First we was cool, then we funked. Some way. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because we got a lot of big egos over here, man. You know what I'm saying? Right. So we always felt that back in the 80s and the 90s that we were doing a lot of shit that other people wasn't doing. Right. You know what I mean? And at the same time, we made money over here. We had the best food spots over here. Right. To make that bread. So it was like, you know, over here in this neighborhood, man, we fought with the Latin Kings at one point in time. We fought with the folks at one point in time. Right. Only ones that, you know what I'm saying, that was more like our brothers with the folks. You know what I'm saying? In this neighborhood. Oh, okay. You know? A lot of cats was jealous of us too because we lived in here. Because these was at one time, they might look like the projects now, but they was originally time. Right. Back to ben, yeah, and we had our own basketball court, swimming pool, a whole bunch of other little shit. So corner stores around where we didn't even have to walk out our hood. You know what I'm saying? We just, everything was right here. Right. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So a lot of cats would be jealous. They'll come over here trying to fight us in our own shit, get beat up, chased up out of here. Don't get caught at that stoplight on 31st place. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it used to be a big, big. Old fashioned building right there that was a corner store. So we never, we had everything over here, man. We had the park down the street, you used to go hoop out, but well, Bryant Park has Woodier over here. Right. You know what I'm saying? So everything was lovely over here. We just had to make sure we controlled our hood. That was everybody's main funk, man. You that know was, what I'm saying? Yeah. And our thing was, it's like me, in my day, you know what I'm saying? We had to, had no choice. Hey, One of my out. closest homies was shout over there. Shout out to the 31st Street Bloods, man. The, the champs and the champagnes and all y'all, oh, man. Yeah, shout man, out to y'all, man. We ain't gonna take nothing away from you, yeah. man. <laughs> I remember when you niggas used to chase niggas down the street 20 deep with a baseball bat and shit, tap the nigga one time. Wham! Yeah. Yeah. And nigga take off running, get chased out so he ain't got no air and then beat the fuck up with the bats. Remember that shit? Hell, hell yeah. <laughs> them niggas had tactics, man. We'll give them that. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it was, man, we had fun though, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because it always, it wasn't all beef, man. Because like, even now today, man, you'll see some of the cats, that's bloods, and just, hey, what's up, homie? It's, right. it's all love. Yeah. Niggas is too old for that. Shout out to Twin Box, Lonzo Ferguson, you know what I'm saying? And a couple other, you know, cats, X Man and them, you know what I'm saying? Niggas I know, HP. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, it ain't all bad, man. We started out getting it in, you know what I'm saying? Right. But after a while, when you become men, y'all grow to see each other as men. Y'all, it's the respect is there because niggas took their phase, niggas didn't run, you know what I'm saying? And, and when you get to see each other later on in life, it's like, okay, my nigga, all right, you doing good, I'm doing good, that's what's up, we grown right. now. Right. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But you gotta make it to that time, though. And right. a lot of y'all ain't gonna make it to that time to be able to be no OG and see what it's like to shake up with, with a nigga who might be an opposite side nigga. Saying. Well, the St. Paul, we uh, we already over there. That was the first place that we touched down as far as turf go. St. Paul was yep. the first place, you know what I'm saying, the old gang went before they yeah. came to, to Minneapolis. Southside. So we had a, we our big brothers was already over there. Okay. So we never had no beef in St. Paul. As far okay. as the north side go, you know, they, they didn't like us because of the, of the bare necessities of the situation, which right. is the south side is more of a working class area. Right. The families that came from here was the families that worked every day. You know what I'm saying? Niggas go to church on Sunday, shit like that. You know what I'm saying? We might have had pimps and prostitutes going down Lake Street, but you got to remember, even pimps go to church. You know what I'm saying? So this is a little bit different. 
But when you get over north, that's the post scrambler side. Right. It's a little bit more impoverished. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's it's like the inside cat and the outside cat. An inside cat, he gonna be kind of fluffy. He gonna have his collar on. You know, smelling like veal all up around his mouth and shit. You know what I'm saying? And then you got the outside cat. You know what I'm saying? This nigga all in the damn trash. He looking for rats and some more shit. So yeah, he ain't liking me. Right. As soon as he smell that veal up around my mouth, he ready to scratch fur up off my ass. Right. You know what I'm right. So that's basically the north side, south side thing. We more like the inside cat, they the outside cat. Right. But no, nothing against the, you know, the north side NFL. You know what I'm talking about? North side for life. There's right. gonna be some unnecessary roughness and some flagrant files, nigga. But this is the slick side, and this is what we talking about right now. Pack flipping, going hard, grinding hard, that's me, I represent the M-Men, it's ice cold on these soda streets, what's beef, I tell you beef, catch a op and pop heat, niggas talk that bullshit, the 40 cent can knock him out of sneaks, from the streets, I'm right here, this is my right here, man, watch that right here, upstairs, Five one four. This is the spot, man. And we have plenty of that, that was my sister going the right there. And the way it looks, that used to be my mom and my dad's room up there. That was the living room. You know what I'm saying? And my room was in the back. Yeah, right yeah. Bullet holes, just some bullet holes in the back of the crib from when uh some niggas came through and shot it up. But they filled it up finally though, but they still in the back back there though when they hit the crib up. Oh, okay. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> oh, that shit. That happened what? Back <laughs> then, it was, you know, it was, it was so, much, so much shit going on. See, the, the homie don't even know. You know what I'm saying? That's, like, that's, how much, that's how much shit was going on. It was happening so fast. Like, you know what I'm saying? This shit, shit just be happening. It's just it's like clockwork. One of my big homies, you know who I'm talking about. I'm not going to say his name. You know what I'm saying? Everybody knows about it. You feel what I'm saying? Right. One of the hardest hitters ever. Right. None of you niggas would never say nothing to his face about what he did, nigga. Period. Been in a pen over 20 years. Still representing, nigga. You feel what I'm talking about? Right. A lot of niggas moved their mamas, moved their homes when he, when he came here. You feel me? Because he's dangerous. You see what I'm talking about? Dangerous. To this day, running the Minnesota car in the feds. You can't get nothing shipped in without him moving it. You know that. Niggas, that anybody that did fed times, you you know that. Right. Period, nigga. None of you niggas will say anything. I, I, I put that on my dead mama. None of you niggas will never say nothing to his face about him coming and doing what he did. Period. And you know who I'm talking about. So, you know, that's what a lot of niggas, they get to talk about. Oh, yeah, 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 nigga. Fuck all that, nigga. We was fucking you niggas up. Period. You see what I'm saying? Right. Nobody's going to talk to cuz about doing it. It's certain niggas is just meant for certain shit. And that's when a nigga was 18, 19. Wow. Did 20, over 20 years and still with this shit. Period, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Ain't gonna, ain't gonna change. You right. know what I'm saying? That's what niggas try. Oh, y'all niggas with this and all y'all niggas with that, man. Listen here, man. Certain niggas is just how it is, homie. Right. You know, certain niggas was in their teenage years, not even really all the way from they shit. Just on some fad shit, represent, you know, damn, hey, I'm just saying. Right. So, you know. <laughs> shit, the killers, nigga. Big Roy. I mean, you know what I'm saying, nigga? <laughs> shit, nigga, who I was beefing with, you know? Any nigga, I mean, shit. Nigga, Irvin. Uh, wherever we was beefing with, you right. know what I'm saying? It was on site, really, you know right. what I'm saying? But, like, particularly just me, mainly, like, a motherfucker that I just really wanted to. That nigga Big Roy, hell yeah, that nigga used to try to kill me, man. <laughs> that nigga, yo, rest his soul right now, right. nigga, you know what I'm saying? Right. Yo, whoops. Yeah. No doubt. No that doubt. My fat motherfucker, boy. Back in the day, it was different crews. Like I said, it wasn't games. It was, it was, it was clicks. It was like many pockets of family that called themselves a click. And it, it was loyal back then. I don't know if y'all remember on um, Plymouth and Penn, Back in the day, they used to sit at McDonald's there. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. They used to sit at McDonald's there and everybody used to gather up. Well, we took it upon ourselves to make sure we go skating every Saturday, every Friday night. And we meet up at this McDonald's. This is the battle right here. Where, where anybody want to get at anybody, they can get at anybody. Mm -hmm. 
the skating ring we used to meet up and we used to bounce everybody around. It's in St. Louis Park. Everybody should know where that skating ring is at. But one incident, we ended up clicking up and we was against a crew called uh, Shorty Max. And this was family members. I ain't gonna say no names, but this is family members we going against. And we not knowing it because there was like a secret behind the shit. So one night we end up, I think it was a Saturday night, we end up clearing the skating ring and we went up to McDonald's. What well, was arguments, fights among family members? You know what I'm saying? Don't have the no business being with the ops. But they was there. And the place got shot up for some odd reason. And then it was shut down. I wonder who did that. They knew anything about the north side, they knew everything about McDonald's. Because that's what the hangout spot after skating. And the reason it was shut down because it got shot up, not because of loss of money. Minnesota is a melting pot. We had cats from Chicago, Detroit. When you see when you young and see a lot of cats, they came with some games that we didn't have because it was and we just elevated. Once oh, I'm gonna tell you this. All right, okay. If you walk down the street, right, and somebody take off on you and punch you in the jaw, right, and they knock you out. You learn a lesson from that, right? You get back up, you know you're not gonna walk down that, that, that same neighborhood, that same block without a bat or something to be able to defend yourself. What happened is we learned a lot of, we trusted a lot of people. You know, you got that, we got that, we had that friendly embrace. And I'm telling you, the experience is the best teacher to make you a stronger person. We, we, we were some people that we trusted, they crossed us, got it in with us, and we learned, we band together. We, we, nobody else came to us, we came as homies, like we ain't gonna let nobody do this to us no more, we ain't clowning like this. You're not gonna be trying to violate us, you ain't gonna be doing this, and we stuck together. And once they, as we, and we stuck together as one fist and came together, we was a force not to be reckoned with. And once the people understood that, because we learned from a lot of people because it was a lot of fast people coming from other towns and we just picked up little pieces of what they did and we learned but we we are we are original men though we are our own places well, i'm not a cat that's gonna go to chicago and i say i'm from the south side of minneapolis i'm from the town i tell people i'm not one of those dudes i'm not gonna be pump fake and say i'm from cali when i'm not from cali i go anywhere i go i represent minnesota I remember it was a time, man, now we was terrorists in our neighborhood, you know what I mean? Like, but we went around here, you know, to the point to where we weren't afraid to fight. You know, everybody that was clicked up back then, you know, the only way you got them clicks is if you weren't afraid to fight. Only one or two cats had a pistol, and the boy was raggedy back then, because we wasn't having what they having now. Um, until we started, you know, touching that coke. Um, but uh, it was an incident, man, where we was bullying all the clicks around. And we saw Showdown Posse. <laughs> and um, <laughs> they was at McDonald's. And you know, these is all my cats today. You know, I hope we laugh about this shit. You know, and uh, they didn't want to come out of McDonald's because they knew we was out there waiting on them. And it was all about fighting back then, you know, straight clicking up, doing our thing. And so, so we walked off. And the next thing you know, we just saw them break out of McDonald's like the relay race, right? So we kind of let them go and we weren't tripping because we knew where they was going. So we went around over there where they was at. This is when the police station had just got built. Man, it wasn't nothing cracking. The police station had got shot at, shot up. It didn't even matter, it was there. So uh, one of my cousins was like, man, don't go to that building because it's a setup. Top, remember? And we said, man, it ain't no setup. He said, man, I seen about 50 people outside. And I said, man, we all together and we ain't see nobody, man. How you see 50 people? So we tough as hell, it's about 10, 13 of us. We go to the building, and they got Showdown Posse standing outside. But who come out the door? It's Big Greedy, Big Sean, some other big ass niggas, man. They weren't even in the same <laughs> gang together. But they ganged up against us. That was the first time in our life we ever fucking ran. We ran, I'm not gonna lie to you. We ran. Until we got around the corner. So that was the part about we should all laugh about this together. Until we got around the corner. Franklin was coming up the street with the heat. Yeah, but that's different though. Late. But the fact of the matter was, was it wasn't like we ran because we were scared. We ran because we was fucking smart. And um, at the same time, back I then. Still, I know niggas got a gun. I'm gone. And, and at the same time, back saying, then, I'm gone. man, you know, we was whooping on everybody, but you can only whoop so many people. And right. do so much. And I always remember that incident because of all the hundreds of battles we've ever had. That one moment when Showdown Posse 
uh, UVL. Cause when you um, brought that up, I laughed. That's why I didn't even have um, no comment on that. Who else was? It was very <laughs> funny, was, cousin. That was one of the days. Hey, it was very saying, funny. That's cousin. one of the days. Cause yeah. you can't beat them all. Yeah. That's my. That's my purpose. But right. after that happened, I had to beat them all. Because in my heart, <laughs> I felt like, nigga, I ain't supposed to run nam fucking time. And that's what Don't I'm saying. Don't get it twisted, nigga. That's, I hey, ran man, because I'm going to see you next day. Hey, because it, <laughs> like, it was Because it wasn't even like the fact of the matter that we ran the discredit credit us on the day. Because our track record, man, and a lot of us still holding things, maintaining, making stuff happen to the point where, nigga, I ain't going to even say that I won every fight I got into. But the fact of the matter, nigga, that I was man enough to fight and then had to come back and shoot at a nigga. I never had to came back and shoot at a nigga unless niggas happened to be right there where I just had to shoot at a nigga. I, ha I still had that mentality that when I leave from down there, I gotta put the strap on. What, what the fuck should I still need my strap on? I shouldn't. But none of these little niggas not gonna make a name off me on anything. I get your ass before you get me. If I see you coming out of my motherfucking eye, I'm gonna get you before you get me. I shouldn't right. even have to roll. Like that no more. You see what I'm saying? Right. I'm dead, man. Me, Joey, um, my brother Mendel, my cousin Pierre, we're at the Riverview. Okay. It's a picture man there. This is, as soon as we come in, we ain't made it to get drinks or nothing yet. But when we come in, we see the, the, the picture man. Me and Joey was together, and my brother was with my cousin. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're older. So we see them. We go, come on, let's go take a picture real quick. I'm not making this up. Boom, we go take a picture. As soon as we get done, you know, we come up to the cameraman to get the picture. It was like three girls right there. Mm -hmm. They bought one of our pictures. Oh, wow. I swear to God, I'm not making this up. One of the girls asked me to, asked me to sign, sign the picture. I autograph. <laughs> autograph the picture, I swear to God. So as I'm, as I'm down writing on it, right, one of the other girls is like, oh, they finna fight. Before I could look up, the girl who, who asked me to write on the picture was like, I think that's your boy. So I look up, and Joey got his back to me. Mm -hmm. He's about 10 feet away, over by the bar. He got his back to me. In front of him is like seven of the dudes who claim shotgun. Okay. Right? So I'm like, oh, these niggas think it's sweet over here. So, uh, so my brother Mandel, my cousin Pierre, are standing with Joey now. You know, as we come over there, they're standing like, you know, behind on the side, right. you know. But I walk around, so now I'm standing behind, behind them. them guys. Yeah, they don't know it. They don't know it. I'm standing behind them, looking over their shoulders at Joey. Wow. So I'm like, you know, you know, whatever. So Joey said, all right, fuck it, nigga, let's go outside. So when we turn the walk, as soon as uh, you know, we can take a couple steps, fuck it, I just steal on one of them from behind, drops him, right? That's the first dude. Right. Drop. I told you this is my most famous gangbang fighting story. Drops him, boom. Oh, I can say his name, but I'm not gonna say your name. You know who you are. Drops him, boom. We uh you know, fight ensues. Boom, it's going down. It's only four of us. They're like seven or eight deep. Right. So in the in the midst of the chaos, security, you know, they grab the niggas throwing us out. And it just so happened how they threw us out. Me and my cousin Pierre, you know, got thrown out. And it's four of them. So right? y'all two and them, them four. And them four. Okay. Now my cousin, like I said, he's older. He don't know these niggas or nothing. He's like, hey man, you know, I don't know what's going on with wolves. I'm like, nah, fuck that. You whole ass niggas is getting y'all's ass whooped tonight. You know, my cousin like, man, it's four of them niggas. I'm like, man, don't. Man, these niggas is bitches. As soon as Joey come out of this club, we finna continue whooping these niggas' ass. You know, Pierre's, you know, like I said, he don't know. He's just thinking, you know, it's four of them, it's two of us. So he's still like, hey, man, no, man, you know. You know, he's just tripping, you know, he's mad or whatever. You know, it's on peace, whatever. I'm like, hell no, man. These niggas is bitches, man. Fuck these niggas, man, you know. And my cousin go to shake his hand. And when when the nigga reached out to shake his hand, fuck it, I stole on him. Boom, drops him. Hmm. That's the second. Second. Nigga, I dropped, right? <laughs> so I'm telling you, it gets, it gets good. 
Uh, so boom, drops him. Just as he falls, the door opens, security's throwing Joey and Mandel on. Joey comes out, kicks him in the stage. Boom. Just like perfect timing. Boom. Now it's four of us and four of them. Mm. Psh, we get to rolling them. I'm talking rolling them up. Do, 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 do. So then, another one of them. Uh, fuck it, he, uh, he, he, he gets me in deal with a good one. Oh, so Della turns to square up with him. And boom, he squared up with me in deal. You know, like they finna go one-on-one -on -one in the midst of a game fight. Nathan, I drops him. Mm, it's the third man. <laughs> drops him, boom. Go to rolling, you know, so finna roll him up. And Spice, I don't know if you know Spice. He's a, he's a crip, shotgun. Or, you know, he's... Right. Uh, he like, he like, no, bro, that's my cousin. You know what I'm saying? Because me and Spice is cool. Right. He like, no, bro, that's my cousin. I'm like, cool. You know, all right, get your cousin. Right. I got my brother. Right. Right? You know what I'm saying? So, boom, he get him. You know, you slide him off because he on the ground. Slide him off to the <laughs> side. Right? Slides him off to the side. So, we go back to rolling niggas up. Now, the, uh... I don't want to say niggas' names so bad because it's because right, right. that's part of the story. But right. we're being nice, you know, because that ain't what this is about. Right. We're just talking. Uh, so now niggas get to like going to their cars and shit. Hmm. Uh, but the main nigga who who Joy was arguing with, just think how much time changes. This nigga, this nigga I'm talking about is my Facebook friend now. Wow. Yeah. Look though. Uh, Boom, he's standing right there. He got two um, champagne bottles. Hmm. He got two champagne bottles in his hand. So he's like, what up, nigga? What up, nigga? Oh. So Joey, like, nigga, put the, put the bottles down, nigga. We can go one on one, nigga. Fuck it. You know, now we're spread out. You know, so mm -hmm. we're in the parking lot outside the Riverview. Yep. So Joey, like, nigga, put the bottles down, nigga. We can go one on one. Fuck it. He puts one of the bottles down. Comes at Joey with the other bottle. Fuck it, I side swiped it. This is the same dude who I hit from the behind. In the club. The first punch that started the fight. Oh, okay. So, boom, fuck it, he come at Joy with the bottle. Joy kind of ducks him a little bit. Fuck it, I come up from behind. Steals on him again. Boom. He turned around, tried to hit me with the bottle. Boom, Joey steals on him. No bullshit. It's like, like a movie. <laughs> fuck it, he, he, you know, Joey hits him. You know, he's kind of, you know, flustered a little bit. He's like, damn. Fuck it, when you turn to look back for Joey, fuck it, I catch him with a lovely one. Drops his ass. Now, Mandel's just gone all overboard. He's super, what niggas on this wall? We ain't got no strap, though. I'm like, niggas is going to their car, Della. It's time to go. Right. You no, know, the fight's fucked. That shit is over with. It's time to go. And y'all just got to the club, right? Just got there. We never made it to. We didn't get one drink. Damn. Not one drink. Fucking, uh. I'm like, Della, come on, man. We won, man. Fuck it, nigga. We won. You right. know what I'm saying? So, like I said, you know, we had just got there, so we was late. So the parking lot was actually full. We didn't park in the parking lot. Mm. You know, it was that driveway, right, right. and yep. then people was parking down there by the river. By That's where we had parked. By on that, pizza. On, yeah, yeah, yeah. We parked down there on that street. So we go to, to, to walk through, uh, you know, walk down that driveway. There's one more of their homies. Standing right there, he wasn't in the fight, but he they homie, and he he ain't said nothing. He's standing there. I don't know if he was just watching or he was scared or whatever. But as we walked by, I just dropped his motherfucking ass, and he went to hear him. Dropped his motherfucking ass, whole ass nigga. Then, then my brother sees the niggas. Tone sees the niggas downtown. Him and Lolly P. Who who. Lolly P's a crib, you know. Yep. He's my cousin, though. Thanks. My blood cousin. Okay. So him and Tone's together, obviously, nigga. He's with Tone. Right. Sees the low homies. Oh, what up, cuz? Tone, like, oh, no, nigga. What's up with this shit? The nigga lying said he wasn't even near. The first nigga I hit. Tone, like, what's up, nigga, with that shit? He, I wasn't there. <laughs> P, like, cuz. Cuz, you was there, cuz. I already, you know, already, you know, already know, cause you wasn't. He's like, I, I swear to God, cause I wasn't there. Wow, that wasn't me. The niggas that was getting busy with us, they ain't got us. 
they ain't got our names in their mouth. You see what I'm saying? Right. You got a chance, and it, 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 it's a it's a it's a DVD called Affiliated. You got a chance to represent your affiliation, your shit. Talk about your shit and how you came up, and you got another nigga name in your mouth. Right. Come on, my nigga. Right. It's it's it's, it's you know bottom line why. Right. Cause we was fucking niggas up. We was in the paper, front news headlines, nigga. You know what I'm saying? The preppy killers, allegedly. You feel me? Sleep low, rest in peace. In the paper, on the front page. Allegedly involved in 13 different homicide. You know what I'm saying? Wow. This is these are these are facts. I got a newspaper, I was on the front page in my room right now. I should go bring it up here. Right. Murder Atlas. We didn't name this town Murder Atlas. The New York Times did. Right. That's why anybody was hating on us because nigga, we was pulling up 20 cars deep, everybody on gold ones. Everybody getting money. You know what I'm saying? Niggas that's flabby and sick, so to speak, with they with they hood or they little club or they little clique or whatever the fuck you wanna call it, they gonna mention us and talk about us. Nigga. Right. But you know we was fucking y'all up. Period. Now I'ma keep it a thousand, nigga. It was it was niggas that was getting busy with us, nigga. Right. Them Chicago niggas was getting busy with us, nigga. Them lords was getting busy with us, them MCs, them dogs, they was getting busy with us. Period. It was going down. It wasn't no one-sided shit. Right. But a lot of these little clubs and little cliques and little funny ass niggas, bottom line, you niggas was getting smashed. <laughs> it wasn't even no comparison, nigga. And you know that. And a lot of y'all was rejects. Y'all wanted to be from here and you didn't make it. We didn't allow you. So now it's so much hate and all this whole other bullshit. Oh, it's from California. Why you niggas, nigga? Get the fuck out of here, nigga. You know what I'm saying? All right. Niggas coming up with fabricated stories and all that. Like my man talking about he knocked six of the homies out and it was three of them. You're full of shit, nigga. Period, nigga. Name some names, nigga. Name some names, nigga. You know fucking well that shit ain't true, nigga. One thing we was known for, being 30, 40 deep in the club, smashing shit. Period. Wow. <laughs> so ask anybody. 30, 40 deep in the club, smashing on niggas. Now we're supposed to believe that three of y'all and you knocked out six of the homies? <laughs> Stop it, homie. I mean, come on. Let's just be honest and real. You know what I'm saying? Right. We done lost homies. We ain't untouchable. It ain't nothing like that. But homie, come on, my nigga. He brought up the homie Spice. Cuz ain't from the set. Spice from Neighbors. You see what I'm saying? All right. Spice ain't from Shotgun, homie. You, you want us to believe that you knocked out six of the homies and it was three of y'all and the homies ran from y'all. Come on, man. Nobody's going to believe that bullshit. What I do remember, <laughs> what I do remember is us at the motherfucking Orpheum at the Dipset concert chasing you niggas down, beating you niggas out your clothes. Do you remember that? Wow. I remember that. I know a lot of niggas that remember that. You see what I'm saying? This ain't a chance for niggas to be on our dick. Get off our dick, nigga. We still relevant. Right. You see what I'm saying? Nobody knows about your, 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 your club or your crew or whatever the fuck y'all want to call it, nigga. You see what I'm saying? The first thing niggas want to say, y'all ain't, nigga, that's from California, y'all represent. Nigga, yeah, it is what it is, nigga. We a chapter from California. That's the right. whole object, is to be fruitful, to spread this shit. We don't die, we multiply. We got homies in Oklahoma, we got homies in New York, we got homies in Kansas City, everywhere. I got pictures of my brother throwing a turf up in Spain. Wow. The homie BT had the niggas in Hong Kong throwing a turf up. That's the, represent, that's the real, represent, real definition of representing, homie. And it ain't like we just woke up like, oh, we just gonna rep this. We got ties out there. Right. We got homies that... Live out there that that's out there all the time. It's a back and forth connection. You know what I'm saying? When you wake up and you hear niggas from out there telling us to stop repping this shit, then that's when you say something, nigga. Your word don't mean shit, homie. Right. Period. You feel what I'm saying? Right. This shit is nigga. We didn't just wake up, nigga, like this. This is what it's about, man. See, when you get to motherfuckers flipping this shit, right? Situations like this are created. Where I'm at, I'm at my homie Shane Craig. Mm -hmm. uh, from Shotgun, my homie though, he's right. an older nigga, about 45, 46. Mm -hmm. uh, been Shotgun, but he kept it real though. You know what I'm saying? Man, you niggas is my homies. Y'all not gonna stop being my homies just cause y'all don't, 
because my other homies don't like y'all. Mm -hmm. You know, just like I wouldn't tell them, oh, you can't hang with your shotgun homies if you're going to be my friend. Right. But that's the days you're trying to tell them. Oh, man, you hang with, you, you're a hook lover, which we ain't even vice lords, so. Right. You need to sound dumb anyway. Oh, man, you a hook lover, you know. They used to say that to him. Yep. So one day, one night, me, Shane, a couple of his homies, who are Crips, because they're his homies. Right. But they old school Crips. Telly, Tano, right? Sitting in Shane's front yard. Now, a car pull up of the niggas who I be beefing with, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So they pull up, very popular, a very popular one, who's on the passenger side, which is our side. Right. So he talking to Shane, but he looking at me. You know what I'm saying? Like, Shane like, oh, what up, cuz? You know, if you mean Shane over here. He like, oh, shit, cuz, just gang banging, you know? You know what I'm saying? Whatever, cuz, you know? Who will, anybody out here gang banging? You know what I'm saying? This niggas gang banging? I'm a scary nigga. So immediately I up blammer. What the fuck you mean this nigga? Nigga, what is you on? You know what I'm saying? Now it's, you know, you know, he got blammer too. Right. So he's like, oh nigga, what? what it's gonna go down in front of this man's in, in his front yard. Wow. Because in Minneapolis, nigga, you got friends on both sides. Right. Nigga, I'm his homie, that's his homie. Oh, he he's of course he's like, oh shh. No, right. hell no, <laughs> hell no, go ahead cuz, I'll talk to you later, bro, I'll holler at you later. Right. You know, I'm, I'm like, cool, you niggas is in the car, y'all can't move around. I'm on foot, nigga, I'm jumping down the street and air that whole motherfucking ride out. But look though, I just brought that up to say, you know, in Minneapolis, you know, it's the, man, the north side is, what is this, 40 blocks? Right, exactly. 40 blocks, man. Before you get to Brooklyn Center. And and you gon' that's the thing, man, when niggas be popping that shit from other cities and all that, uh. I've been there, I've been to LA before. That shit spread out in the motherfucker. Right. He was huge. big as it's huge. Right. If you got beef with a nigga in Minneapolis, you gonna see that nigga. So so all that fake beefing, that's the shit that don't fly in Minneapolis. Right. Because you're going to see that nigga, it's too little. It ain't nothing but a couple clubs, nigga. So what, you're going to change your whole life, you don't go out no more? Right. Otherwise, you're going to see that nigga and you're going to have to stand on whatever you was with. Right. Otherwise, you're going to get bitched. Now, a lot of them niggas got straight bitched. A lot of them niggas got straight bitched. I can remember seeing niggas at the, at the murder station. Like, nigga, get out your car. You won't get out the car. I'm spitting on you. Get out the car, whole ass nigga. What's up? Wow. A bitched. Bitched. Fucking caught one nigga in, in, in Rudolph's. Before any blows get thrown, Joey and Gino come in the door. This nigga jumps up on top of the table and starts screaming, Hell, hell, they, they finna try to do something to me. What? That's, how are you even cool with him? How? Polo and Gina catch a nigga up at Classics at the, supposed to be at the Crip shop, the yeah. Red Record shop. Trying to beat on a nigga, this nigga jumps in somebody else's car, locks the door. You got a nigga standing outside the car, you got the, you're locked in the door. Like, you couldn't be my homie no more. Right. Nothing, you can't even say nothing. Nigga, shut up, that nigga over there had you sitting in the car with the doors locked. He ain't even seeing you. Okay. You know, I started out breakdancing, man. I was one of them niggas uh, uh, in this group called MBBO, for those that don't really know about it was Minneapolis B-Boy organization, some real old okay. you know, break dancing, pop lock, you know, the little fat markers, you know, writing on Hell shit, yeah. you know what I'm saying, just normal, right. regular kid shit. Chicago came up here with all the little gang shit and that kind of like accelerated it a little bit because it was out of necessity. Either I'm gonna let you niggas come up here from another city and call yourself 
chasing me all up around my shit right. where I'm born and raised at, right. or nigga, I'm finna knock you niggas down. And that's how that's what really made it just happen even that right. much more faster. Cause the <laughs> Chicago's came here, they was like, nigga, you niggas is lame, y'all soft. And some more shit. And I was sure like, did. nigga, I'm socking on your lips and your jaw though. <laughs> you don't go where you go, cuz. Nigga, we live here. You can't. It would just be shit. like if I go to Chicago <laughs> right now. I can't go to Chicago and tell you niggas, you niggas is lame in your own shit. And right. Y'all some suckers. I'm probably going to get tied up somewhere. Right. You know what I'm saying? So we just going to keep it 187, no nigga. And so, but the folks, they lived over here. We didn't really have, we only had two uh, brothers over here. Shout out to uh, Asa and Kowalski, man. Them was two of our niggas that lived down the block. You know what I'm saying? They was uh, solid vice lords. Okay. Okay. Yeah, they created the uh, group called the Bogus Boys. This one right here, shout out to um, OG Reggie Ferguson. That's a blood. One night we was at this, uh, they used to throw little parties at these little clubs. And they had one at this place called the Industry Theater. It's in uh, Dinky Town. So we go to the Industry Theater and we with the folks from over here in this neighborhood and it's the Rolling 60s and a couple 90s members. We out there deep as hell. Now, the folks, because the niggas is from Chicago or whatever, their they're banging style is a little bit unorthodox. It ain't, it ain't like ours. So, to make a long story short, we outside and we see that nigga OG Reggie Ferguson's car out there. I ain't had nothing to do with this shit. Nigga takes his tube sock off his foot, nigga puts it in the nigga's uh, gas tank and blows his Cadillac up. We outside, we drinking the 64 ounces and shit. We out there deep as fuck in the corner. They come out, they see the car on fire. We across the street. When they notice we over there, we all just break our 40 ounces on the curb and walk across the street to the niggas. They start taking off running. You know what I'm saying? We deep as hell. We got extra disciples with us, Crips with us, some more shit. You know what I'm saying? But OG Ferguson, though, he didn't he run. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, Cuz ain't run. Cuz was like, with there with his little perm, like, nigga. Any one of you niggas, I put that on my mom's socking on me. Shout out to Famo, he does got heart. Does always have heart, you right. know what I'm saying? <laughs> on them niggas side, that's, I think that's what them niggas get their courage from because they look at this nigga, he ain't nothing but this motherfucker tall. Right. Nigga, that's what you niggas need to model, your, model yourselves about, nigga. It don't matter how big you is, it's about heart, fam. You cannot be no motherfucking gangbanger if you ain't got no heart. You're gonna be always shooting people. You're gonna be always in risk of getting shot. You're gonna be always in risk of going to jail. Cause you ain't got no heart. A nigga that got heart, he ain't gotta worry about going to jail all the time. As soon as you run up on me, I'm socking your lips off your face. I can't go to jail for that. Right. Unless you finna be a bitch nigga and tell. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I made it to where I'm at right now. Niggas socking on niggas and staying out the way. That's why I got broken knuckles now. Socking on these niggas and stay out the way. This is the only way you're gonna make it to this age, man. I'm, I'm 41, I'll be 42 this August, man. You see, I'm still looking young and vibrant, man. Niggas ain't been touching on me, nigga. I'll catch a chuck up your ass. Being in the game landed me in jail at the age of 13 for three and a half years for attempted murder. Okay. And um, I'm grateful that I, I, I experienced that because I got a second chance of, of life and I am who I am today because of that. Okay. Now you want to talk about what happened? Well, uh, what had happened was... <laughs> <laughs> um, at the Mall of America, it was, I, you know, I, of course I can never forget about it. Mall of America, that's when it first opened up. That was the hangout spot for everyone. Um, some females didn't like me for whatever reason. And what's so crazy is from what I understand, they was from the same set. Vice Lord. Hmm, go figure. But they wasn't real like I was. And they didn't like me for whatever reason. Don't know, don't really care to know. But they got it in their mind that they wanted to fight me. Well, if anybody knows Sugar, I'm, I'm down for whatever. The problem was is they followed me over south, Chicago and Lake Street right by Chicago and Lake Liquor Store. Mm -hmm. And instead of fighting me one-on-one, -on -one, they wanted to jump me. I got jumped by four females and like five dudes stumped to the ground. Wow. Okay. I couldn't lay my face on a pillow for two weeks. That's how bad they beat me up. 
I'm gonna keep it real and say that my supposedly best friend and a cousin was with me. What's her name? <laughs> I'm not gonna say no names. Uh, blood cousin and supposedly best friend was with me. And one may think, how did you get jumped by all these people that badly and they standing around watching? Anywho, fast forward. Once I did get up, I ran to the nearest phone because we didn't have cell phones back then. <laughs> right. So I ran to the nearest phone. I ran to a video store on Lake Street to call my sister. I couldn't get a hold of my sister, so the cousin called her stepfather. Stepfather came, picked us up, and being who I am, I don't bow down for nobody or nothing. So I went back to the scene of the crime. Hmm. To, to to finish what should you know what started when I got there the females was there the dudes also was there but because they know my family this is my assumption because they know my family they took off running when they see me pull up the girls of course they didn't know who I was or what my family is about they stood there so I got out the car and I'm like I'm gonna fight every last one of the ones who jumped me one on one uh, needless to say, I only got to the first one, and uh, I stabbed her in the back, twisted the knife, three inches from her heart, I almost killed her, and I took off running, police caught up to us, and that's how I spent three and a half years in jail. Hell. I don't think you did that, man. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. You kind of fucked up, huh? Christ, yo, that was too phony. <laughs> oh, what? Too far as eyes, baby. <laughs> hey, he real fucked up, eh? Fucked. I'm tired of my Get your ass up out the car, nigga. Get the fuck out. Break yourself, nigga. Break yourself. This a bitch. Get your motherfucking ass up out the car. All right, nigga, chill. Can't get out the car, man. I ain't going on like a chump. Nigga, don't make me rush you. Get your ass up out the car. Get up out the car. All right. Nigga, get out. All right, nigga, I'm coming. Break yourself, nigga. Yeah, nigga, I got you, all right. Get your motherfucking ass up out the car now. Bitch, move. Shoot that nigga, do you? Nigga, fuck you. Ah, shit. Fuck you. Get up out the car. Oh, shit, that's Kane. Hey, hey, they getting jacked. Come on. Shit, that's Kane and Harold, man. Going to Chicago, and Franklin had a little dope on me and shit, so I was like, "Fuck it." I lived on Chicago on Third, which was another good dope area. You know what I'm saying? So I was going up there just to, you know what I'm saying, sell what I had and then smash the crib. Right. But you know, started uh, and then plus my homeboy, little murder, was always on Chicago and Franklin. So, which I didn't know being with a female all damn day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Niggas had beef. Niggas started rolling through the hood, shooting up some shit. On uh, 28th of Bloomington, a couple of uh, little homies got hit. And it was actually, you know what I'm saying? That's when Six O's and Raymond Crips started beefing. You know what I'm saying? All over some snitch bitch ass shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna lie. One, one, nigga, one nigga got snitched on. Niggas, it turned into a to a uh, hood hood beef. You know what I'm right. saying? So I'm riding the bike through the neighborhood here. Over here? Right over here. You know what I'm saying? Actually, this block right here. You know what I'm saying? I'm seeing a couple cars through this block. You know? And I pulled riding through. house right here you know what I'm saying it was a nigga on that porch like you know what I'm saying hey you like yelling at me like six so cuz come here you know what I'm saying and I'm looking around like what up cuz the six nigga who that who that who that 
And they, you know what I'm saying? They kept saying the same thing. 6 0 cuz, come here, cuz. I'm like, yeah, there's something funny. Looked around and seen a couple niggas' cars. I knew, noticed that I was from Raymond. So I knew who it was. So I started set tripping. Fuck you, Rice Krispy ass niggas. That's they diss. You know what I'm saying? Grab oh, wow. my motherfucking, uh, you know how, how niggas do back in the day. Didn't have no heat on you, so you grabbed your pager. Right. Acting like you had a strap. Like, right. nigga, fuck you, nigga, what's cracking? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You know, next thing you know, these about motherfucking 20 niggas come from around that house. I'm like, all right, time for me to ride. Out. Right. <laughs> so I went right ahead and jumped on the little trike I was on, and you know what I'm saying? I smashed. You know? Smashed out, riding down this block right here, 24th, going towards Chicago. You know what I'm saying? It's all full of uh, Somalians and shit now. Right. But, you know what I'm saying? Riding down this block here, you know? Seen the kind of, you know what I'm saying, look back, seen the nigga, seen a car that I wasn't familiar with that uh, came through, was turning off of that block right there. So I'm, you know what I'm saying, being naive, thinking like, you know what I'm saying, super crypt done kicked in, I done scared some niggas, which didn't happen. Right. Niggas rolled up on me. And actually, right here on this corner, right here, Chicago and Franklin, where all them fences and shit is at. You know what I'm saying? That's where the school and shit is at now. You know, but uh, the area they pulled up on the curb. Like, aside from the curb there, I was on the sidewalk. They let the whole clip go on the neck. Hit me twice. Fell off the little bike. Jumped off the bike, came running across the street here. You know, it says no turn on red, but I'm gonna turn anyway. But, uh, jumped off the bike, you know what I'm saying? Ran across the street. You know what I'm saying? A drilling rush. Ran to this house right here. This one right here? You know what I'm saying? A little punk ass white motherfucker gonna sit up here and look at me in the motherfucking window while I'm sitting on his porch bleeding and shit. Lady next door here like yelling out the window. I called the police, baby. You know what I'm saying? They coming, they coming. I passed out on front on they, on they, on they uh, grass, man. Woke up. I was in motherfucking Hennepin County. Right then. That's where they brought me to. Hennepin County Medical Center. The niggas think this is a bad hospital? No, the fuck it's not. <laughs> <laughs> they do their thing. One of the best hospitals in the motherfucking country. Man, you know what I'm saying? That's the, that's the story about me getting shot. But it ain't, it ain't a sweet one. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? And believe me, them hot ones don't feel good. And I'm the, one of the blessed ones to get shot in, in the non-fatal where it's not going to affect me through my life. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Or any type of, you know, paralyzed injuries, because it could have. You know what I'm saying? The doctor told me when that good range, if it would have went an inch up, it would have hit my spine. If it would have went an inch down, I would have been wearing a shit bag for the rest of my life. Damn. You know what I'm saying? That's not no shit that you want a, a female, hey, baby, let me go. Let me go to the bathroom real quick. Let out your bag and then try to go hit some ass. Get the fuck out of here. That shit ain't gonna work. You know what I'm saying? So, right. you niggas that's out here gang banging and everything else, you know what I'm saying? It might sound fun, because I thought it was too. I was a crip happy ass nigga. I got put on back in 92. You know what I'm saying? So, I was a crip happy nigga that was out here ready to bang with niggas on whatever. Niggas used to bang niggas just because they was from another hood. Didn't even know the niggas. But was that shit sweet? No, it wasn't. Right. It wasn't sweet at all. So you niggas out here gang banging thinking just is fun. Yeah, you might have fun now, but you got consequences later. So think about the consequences before you make a move. Because them consequences could be life threatening and life changing. Right. Penitentiary ain't fun. <laughs> Getting shot ain't fun. There's a lot of money out here and a lot of development that's in Minnesota that you can be getting a lot of money for. So think about that bread, not these bitch ass niggas that's gonna have you ass out here doing something stupid. We had lost the homie Big Foe. Mm -hmm. You feel me? We lost cuz. And um, we weren't even a third of the way over mourning him. And we had a we had a, a candlelight visual. We went and got one of them big ass spotlights, just repping the homie. You feel what I'm saying? Right. We repping cuz, you know what I'm saying? It's just it's a casualty of war. It's mm -hmm. a casualty of the streets. Things that happen, fucked up as it may be. And um, so I went out there, me and me and a couple of the young homies. We went out there and um, 
<laughs> my nigga Big Scat, he can, you know, I hopped out the whip, I came, and he came up to me, you know what I mean? This is my bigger homie. Right. He always had a thing that I fucking hated, but he always did it. He was tall, he always towered over me. He would, he would kiss me on the forehead. And as a young man, what the fuck is the fucking nonsense? I hated that shit. Cuz used to do that shit all the time. I'm like, nigga, the man. I hopped out the whip and I, I approached him. He kissed me on the forehead. I swiped that shit off. And his last words to me were, I'm, I'm out here where everybody's supposed to be at. Like, I'm out here, homie. Right. And um, I was just out there briefly because I still was fucked up in the head, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because right. I grew up like I'm I'm a youngster in this shit. So I grew up around Big Foe and mm -hmm. other cats like that, you know what I mean? I lived with them 13, 14 years old, so I couldn't really handle the shit. I'm I'm, the one, I'm one of them. I'm not trying to be at the vigil or at the funeral. Yeah, yep. I'm trying to get in the street. So I came briefly and I left. By the time I got to my destination, my phone was blowing up. Like they just killed Big Scat. I'm like, what? Damn. So, Cud lost his life at the vigil. That's uh -uh. how that's how funky it was, you feel me? Damn. Motherfuckers like, oh, they out there deep, they slid. Whoever they are, I don't know who they are. Right, right. You feel me? And they slid and they, and, 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 and and before I could make it home, the homie died. Damn. It was a fucked up situation because we ain't done mourning. The other right one. you feel what i'm saying yeah so that right there was like probably the most dramatic part of this shit you feel me for me you see what i'm saying and yeah. um that 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 really struck home right there because uh it was like a double whammy it wasn't even done morning the homie it wasn't a week i don't think he hadn't been buried or anything and then boom boom it was just like it was a fucked up part of my life homie so that was like I, like hours later, like right when you left, man, it was probably twenty minutes. Later. Oh my goodness! And I, and, I, and, I, and I had nightmares about it. I had, you know, uh, what do you call that shit? Survivor's guilt. Like yeah, I should have yep. been there. Right. Should have stayed. What the fuck was I thinking? I was mad at myself. I beat myself up forever. Still to this day, if you listen to my song, uh, uh on back to business, I tell the whole story on there. You know yep, what I'm saying? Yep. Yep. That was the first time I really even spoke about it. It was therapeutic to the boy. I wrote it while I was in the joint. You feel me? And right. then I recorded it when I got out. It was therapy for me. You feel me? It was it was a, it was a hard time. You wow, know what I mean? man. It was a real hard time. But that's that's what kids. That's what comes with this shit. Is is it's what comes with this bullshit. Right. That's why you gotta turn over a new leaf and find a new way to. You know what I'm saying? Right, you can right. represent where you're from. I'm always represent where I'm from and have love and loyalty to it. But you, you find out that there's bigger things and better things in life. You feel what I'm talking about? Right. And, um, you know, if you can learn from me, then you don't have to go through what I go through, what I went through. Being shot four times, two prison bids, losing multiple homies, going to more funerals than you go to, co than you go to graduations. Mm. That's what life should be about, homie. Because I think really, like, motherfuckers weren't really getting shot up at schools and shit to, like, you know, the early 90s and shit when the little incidents was happening with us, you know what I'm saying? A few motherfuckers dying up at work. But I mean, I had one where I know, you know what I'm saying, motherfuckers know so so, you know what I'm saying? If you was there that night, that shit up at North at the uh, Washburn and North game and shit, man. I was bitch talking to Khalid, man, calling him all type of hoes and shit. I was mad at him and shit. I mean, I gotta keep it a hundred. He keep know it, it, you know what I'm saying? We, we can't right. sugarcoat shit, right. you know what I'm saying? This is how that night went, right. you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm rash talking at him and shit. You know what I'm saying? His sister up on the side, uh, the cheerleader and shit, talking shit to me and shit. So I'm like, man, fuck that nigga. I'm gonna beat that nigga up at the end of the night. But I had beef already in the streets, and I'm seeing these niggas in the, uh, in the motherfucking gym and shit already. Making calls and shit, so I'm like, oh man, that's gonna be somewhere on down. But I'm gonna fuck Khalid up before this shit go down. Yo, this, I'm telling you, you know what I'm saying? Right. I'm shit with. Right. So, nigga, I go outside, I got Khalid, me, Khalid, and my brother and shit. Nigga, I'm walking outside and shit. Nigga, I'm beefing with. I see him. 
the nigga Raphael, Doughboy, nigga, they all in the street. So walking and shit, nigga, and I pull my pistol out on my side. Like, when I know that was that motherfucker that just peeked under the, you know what I'm saying, around the little, the men and shit, right? Like, so, I'm walking, nigga, I hear him now, like, yeah, that's good. So I'm like, you know, I'm telling you, I'm going to fall back. Right, nigga, fall back, so I'm fall back. So, I'm walking. As soon as I get to the motherfucking, you know what I'm saying, the little thing, nigga, the nigga jump out like, what up now? Like this motherfucker. Bust, nigga. Wow. He fall. <laughs> he hit the leg, nigga. Panic, nigga. Fall down and shit, run up to the north door. He in this bitch. I mean, motherfuckers was there, man. They know how that shit, man. Wow. That's some real shit, though. My beefs, that's how fucked up I was thinking in my head, nigga. My beefs. Just cause I got shot that night, I blame that nigga for me getting shot. <laughs> I mean, that's how fucked up I used to think. Like, man, what the fuck? Bro, I used to hang with you, so I already know. It's all love, man. It's all love, man. I used to hang with the nigga, so I already know. I tell, I tell everybody, man, I'm a sociopath, bipolar sociopath. You know what I'm saying? And good and low, good and low. Just keep me even. We good. Uh, I was from Guadalupe, Iowa. Mm, I don't say 19, it was 90, it was 90 exactly, because I got shot when I was actually 16 years old. Um, it was so crazy, because I should have just went took my ass to work, because I had a job. Summer job, I was one of the youngest few cats back then that had a job, even getting some money back then, you know, legally. Um, but, I don't know, it was a nice day, man, July, man, I... I Then he didn't go to work, called in and went down to the park. Before I went, before I went down to the park, I had left from I had left the crib and went all, I mean, I got all the way down the block and then water the wire. I got I got right off East 4th Street and turned all the way back around just to go get a gun, a 22. This same day I got shot actually. Right. Um, so I was he's down in the park, we was in the park, and it was, it was back then we called fiends. We call them fiends because they they either bought dope from us or they bought dope from the people that the legendary that shot people that shot me. So the story went to the fact that these people that that were smokers went back and forth just to see who they can get their product from and their 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 fix from. So they went back and forth between us and them saying some guys from um they was actually from West no, they was from Wisconsin. Yes, from Wisconsin. Okay. So um the nigga name is Richard Washington. I would never forget the nigga name that shot me. I would never ever forget him. And if I see you with it, I probably fuck you up still. But I have gave you, I forgave you a little bit, dog, because because of you, I'm, I'm I'm a very person, you know. So you know, I ain't gonna be too hard on your punk ass. Right. But uh, <laughs> uh, what I'm saying though, like, we was down at the park, man, and it was just like we, everybody was nice sunny day. Actually, I me, mean, these all sitting out there, and the, the, the people, the smokers, were going back and forth, and one of the guy, one of the guy that got shot with me, his name was Beastie. You know what I'm saying? Michael Bruce is the actual real name. <laughs> I said the name on TV, nigga. I know. I said you're good. I said it because I can. But, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, we, he was a great friend of mine. He was a vice lord, actually. You know what I'm saying? We, so this would, so this, this let you know that at a time, at some time in life, even even as gangs, separate gangs, it all became the big gang, the, the most gang of it all, the main, the uno, uno of it all. I mean, the money. That's what we all want. So even as him being a vice lord, me being a gangster disciple, we still was on the same bench. Right. Got shot the same day. Wow. The same niggas. Wow. You know? So, uh, I mean, and, and it, I mean, we had, first I thought some firecrackers going off. And, I mean, why? Because it was it was around the July time, so we niggas so, popping fire. So, y'all was actually sitting on the bench, right? We were sitting on the bench. We okay. We sitting on the bench with Waterloo Bible. Um, heard some shots go off, and so I, as, as the shots going off, I'm starting to, everybody started fleeing, jumping off. So, I actually jumped off the bench, and by the time I jumped off, I was already shot. As I me no, didn't know it because I never been shot at this time, so I just knew that I just felt a numbness and a burning in my left hip. So I actually fell down, uh, tried to get back up, man, and it wasn't happening. Right, um, man. And then was I got love for this guy right here, man. His name is Darrell Jackson. The man came back and picked me up, and at, at this time it was bullets flying everywhere. I mean, I mean, so it was best to him that I didn't get hot, see shot more, get hit more than one time at that time. Um, so. Then he took me to the hospital, man, and so now I end up now to this day, at 40 years old, I walk with a lift because of the shot. But I'm blessed to be here, and I'm, I'm, great, I'm grateful to be here. It probably, it probably was a big one to everybody because 
I was I was always the one that kept a lot of action and funniness, <laughs> a lot of stuff going on. So if for, for me to be going at an early age like that, I know it hurt a lot of my family because I know I've, I've been loved. I've been loved forever by them and still loved right. to this day. So I mean, it, 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 the other effect. I mean, me being the only child my mom had, I it been it been a great deal to her. Bitch ass nigga, you couldn't even shoot. And then you couldn't even handle your gun well, because if you can handle your gun well, I wouldn't have had no bullet wound in my motherfucking hand because I took your gun. You got more heart than your punk ass old man. Come here. But yeah, I got shot in the hand. And I took the bitch ass nigga gun and I shot him in his ass. So it don't matter where you at or how safe you think you is, there's always somebody sneakier than you is. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's, it was on, what's that? Broadway and 26. Okay. Broadway and 26. Matter of fact, scratch that. Broadway right across the street from Midas, that's where I lived in that apartment building. Yep. So, there the spot is, and you know who I'm talking to. And you know who I'm talking about. Because <laughs> if you was a hitter, you would have finished your job. It was for you bitches. And there's no way I shouldn't have took your gun and shot you in your ass and the rest, rest of your homies ran. That's what they do, cuz. You know what I'm saying? Fucking sissies. I'm gonna tell it like this. My lifestyle, nigga, from the gang life, nigga, I'm gonna tell you motherfuckers not to do it. But you know what I'm saying, loyalty is a must, you know what I'm saying, regardless of whatever the fuck you're doing. You know, working, you know what I'm saying, for a company, what? Be loyal to the motherfuckers. But I'm going to tell you not to be in the motherfucking gang on these terms of my life, you know what I'm saying, and what caused me to go away for 11 motherfucking years. Me and my cousin went to a motherfucking party, man. You're just a type of propaganda In the land of supply and demand A girl without a mind ain't human They gotta be more than just a butt that's booming Assuming there's room in my life for a lover Undercover, not the one that'll hover over me like a bird The force says, uh -uh, I ain't with that Yes girl, you better kick that yeah, Off of uh, 29th and Humboldt and shit And you know, Tasha, Keisha Keys, you know what I'm saying, yeah, Keisha yep. Keys, all Essence. There was a lot of motherfuckers up in the party and shit, man. And me and they're kicking it and shit, you know what I'm saying? Some funny motherfuckers came through that motherfucker with mask on, it, like hockey mat, uh, Michael Meyer mask or some shit, you know what I'm saying? Niggas came in there, but they was on their own shit, throwing up their gang signs. We don't give a fuck about shit like that, man. So, you know, I'm chilling, man. Me and my cousin, you know, thinking about who we gonna fuck that night. You know, they gonna have a big dick contest or all that. <laughs> so, <laughs> we sitting in the basement and shit, man. Everybody coming through that motherfucker. Uh, Marnum came through there. Uh, Mike. Uh, uh, man, there's a lot of motherfuckers right. from the north side. Everybody was finna go up to the riverside and shit. This was the 97. So, uh, we chilling and shit. So, one of the motherfuckers that, uh, I had the mask on, these people got drunk, they kicked him out of shit. And we get we laughing, smoking and shit. I'm like, man, what if what if this motherfucker come back because he's drunk and he can't get in and start shooting the motherfucker up? So we all laughing about this, you know what I'm saying, the shit we saying and shit. That shit passed by, you know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to get this shit clear as day. Right. So that shit passed. We in the basement and shit. Motherfuckers ready to get something to eat and shit. So I'm downstairs with Tanea. We sitting down there and shit, you know what I'm saying, eating. My cousin comes downstairs like, man, this nigga, man, talking shit, nigga. I'm like, man, leave that bullshit alone, nigga, man. Go be one of them bitches, man, so we can, you know what I'm saying, get up out of here. Right. My mom don't live with me. Nigga. My mom don't live with me. They go back upstairs. I'm sitting, I'm sitting downstairs with old girl and shit. Old girl coming. Like, man, let's go. So we finna go upstairs. Like, I go upstairs, my cousin went out the side door. I'm like, man, what the fuck you on? So I, I'm like, fuck it, let's go get your jacket. Let's go, we going out the front. So we go up to the front. He said, I'm like, bro, don't go outside, don't go outside. I'm like, man, what the fuck you talking about? She's like, man, they finna get into it and shit. 
So I'm like, man, fuck that. So I go out there. What's up, boy? <laughs> so I go out there and shit. Walk out to the front of the little, you know what I'm saying, where the uh, semen is. I look. I see my cousin. Uh, fire on the nigga. Bam! The nigga pull that motherfucker out like. So you saw it with your own eyes? I think I saw all that shit, you know what I'm saying? And then I see my motherfucking cousin stumbling and shit, nigga, I'm like, man, what the fuck? And the nigga had the motherfucking gun, I mean, he just like, he's, like if he had more things, he was gonna let that bitch still ride, right. nigga, cause he got hit in his motherfucking mouth. Wow. <laughs> man, that shit get bleary after that, though, you know what I'm saying? Right. After that, two motherfuckers did, man. My cousin on the ground, he did. I went to jail. 11 years. You know what I'm saying? 11 hard motherfucking years. 11 hard years to think about, you know what I'm saying? My loyalty, you know what I'm saying? My loyalty still, I do the same shit, you know what I'm saying? For my niggas, you know what I'm saying? That ain't never changed, but is it worth it for some of the shit that we do? You know what I'm saying? Motherfucking two people lost their life. Cause one motherfucker got punched, nigga, and he let his feelings, his feelings, you know what I'm saying, causing the boom body to harm. Nigga, I'm mentally fucked up. You killed my cousin, so I'm mentally fucked up. I don't know what I was supposed to do. I did what I thought I was supposed to do. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's how I, that's how I was raised, you know what I'm saying? But wow. it's just the feelings, nigga, you know what I'm saying? We gotta, we gotta get out that bullshit, man. Nigga. Real niggas get their feelings hurt every motherfucking day. Right. That don't mean you put your motherfucking hands on another man. And you know what I'm saying? Just because you know you can't whoop a nigga, don't pull no motherfucking pistol to try to kill the nigga, man. Because I remember, I remember the story that, um, that DJ um, was involved in, and it, 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 it was a really important transition in my life. And um, my niece had got shot. She was 19 months old, and some um, bullets came through the window over north, and she caught um, uh, three buckshots in her head and five in her stomach. And I was sitting right there when it happened, and, you know, we were decorating my sister's house because she just moved in, and all the babies over there, and we chilling. Now, my younger brother, the gangster young man, he, he's not a gangster. That was just some of the behavior. He's my beautiful young brother, Jason. Um... Mm -hmm. So he was sitting on the porch, and he left, and we didn't think none of it, you know. After he left, we heard a, and we were like, what's that? The TV went out. So a bullet had come through the TV. So immediately we started checking the children. You know, she was the last one. So I'm checking the children, sending them to the back room, because we in cover now. Everybody running for cover. We didn't know what happened. Get to this, the, the little baby girl. She got a little doll in her hand, and she just looking so innocent. I checked her, everything was fine. I looked back and like two seconds later, I seen a silver bullet behind her ear. And the next thing you know, her intestines and everything was hanging out just like that. Wow. Right? Scariest thing in my life. I never seen nothing like that. This was the first time we ever had any kind of incident in our family and it was just crazy. And it was the first time in my life that I wasn't in control. Right? Because mm -hmm. my role is their mother, you know, I'm the mm -hmm. person in the family that takes. Hey, but I can do nothing about that. And my sister looking at me like, Yadi, and I'm like, you know, I couldn't do anything. And it broke my heart. And mm. I, I really went into a depression for like two years after that. Um, because I, it was the first time I couldn't help my family. So, but in that process, I met VJ. Um, and, you know, he came and he helped us out. And nobody wanted to help us. And at this time, I really wasn't... I didn't know the people in the community like that. I was like working at Harvest. I was kind of, I wasn't on the political public scene like, mm -hmm. like I am now. Um, nobody wanted anything to do with us. They didn't want to help us or anything because all they said, all they can think about was um, this is a gang related mm -hmm. and situation. Mm -hmm. And kept saying, well, mm -hmm. Diasha's not in the gang. Right. She's 19 years, she's 19 months. Right. Nobody wanted to help us. And VJ was the only person who believed in our family and who helped our family and who stood with us. All of these people you see out here today, everybody, nobody was willing to do anything for us. 
Mm. And we didn't know anybody like we know the hood. This is where we grew up. Right, right. So we know the whole north side, but we don't know these political, all these leaders, mm -hmm. all these people who want to be on the camera, all that. You know, mm -hmm. the hood don't know them. I just want you to know that. Um, <laughs> we don't know the people. We didn't. They, you know, they just there. So, um, but VJ stood with us, and I never forget that. I'm trying to pray, but where are you? I'm all churched out. The most, uh, I lied to my kids about it. Okay. They finally found out about it. The most significant time is when I got shot right here. It's a scar right here. Food try to blow my dome off. Everybody, what's that scar right there? What, right, what right. What happened right there? What happened? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, Food slid on me, you know, I'm, 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 I'm sitting in the web, talking to one of the homies out the Paul, and uh, the fool, uh, I don't know who he is, uh, he was scared. Hmm. I get props and props to do. dude. Right. He pulled right up on me, right alongside of my car. Oh, shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. He, he, you know? If he wasn't scared, if he was skillful, if if, if he was a real hunter, right, he would have finished me. Oh yeah, blew your head you off. Me? Yeah. I mean, I'm talking about the thing wasn't far from me at all. You know, one of them side narrow streets to where if two cars pull up on each other, you kind of like, ooh, am I gonna hit? Right, right, right. right. He pulled right up on me and squeezed once, boom, went in and out my chin and hit the homie next to me. Oh Feel damn. Me? Yep, and um, I thought the homie was dead, you feel me? I'm like, damn, this nigga just killed the homie, cuz. I busted you. He got up out of there. I called my mom, I'm like, mom, call the ambulance. <laughs> he, woo, woo, woo. Right. I, you know, I'm more worried about him. Right. So I pulled up to the house, you know what I'm saying? And I thought he was dead, but he ended up surviving and shit like that. But yep, that's what I got, you know. Hit right here in the chin. It wasn't an actual direct hit. It kind of grazed like in right. right here and out like right there. I lied to him for a long time. I think they might have found out from their mom or overhearing because they know this, young homie. Kids are always watching and listening. Always. They be in my mouth. So I don't know if they learned because I told them or something that I said or if their mom might have mistakenly told them or something. But I lied to him for a long time because I don't want to glorify it. Right. Sometimes just by telling your story. You may be glorifying it without even knowing it. Without out, yeah. Kids are like, man, this nigga's a G. Right. Kids got hit a full time. And you trying to tell them this is bullshit. Right. Woo, woo, woo. But, you know, with music and TV and all the things that are right. going on, they get right. the wrong idea right. of what's popping. You feel right. what I'm talking about? So, I don't want to try, I don't want to glorify that. I want to make sure that they're old enough to know that this was bullshit. This was a part of dad's messed up life that caught up with him mm. that is not nothing to glorify or be proud of. And let's bring up the, the time I got shot in my stomach because I'm, okay. you know, because I almost died. You feel me? And my doctor to this day, when I see him, I hug him. And he always says, yeah, the angels were with you that night. The angels were with you. So let's talk about that so the kids just don't think that okay. it's, you see what I'm saying? Right. Because I, uh, a cat upped on me, and I try to be tough and Superman and try to grab the thing, and he blammed on me right in my stomach, point blank. Mm. I lost uh, uh, 12 inches of my small intestine. Mm. You know, I still have complications to this day. I had to have surgery like three or four times, and I barely made it. You feel what I'm saying? So it's like, that's nothing to be proud of, homie. Right. You feel what I'm saying? That's fucked up. Right. Like when I first got shot, I had staples and I couldn't sleep in the bed because I had staples and it hurt me so bad. I had to sit up sleeping in the couch. Who mm. who wants that? Who wants that? After that, I had a hernia because of the surgery. I had blood clots. I almost died from a blood clot traveling from my uh my motherfucking calf to my lungs. If I wouldn't have, if I would have waited an hour later, I would have died from a blood clot in my lungs. I had to take like 10 medications. I still hurt and have pains in my stomach to this day. I had two surgeries on the hernia. The hernia came back, mm. bulged back out. That's when your intestines, it's a little hole when your intestines pop out. It's painful as shit. Right. Who, who wants to live with that? Wow, That man. ain't nothing to be 
to be happy about, homie. Right. That shit don't feel good when you get hit up. Right. So don't think I'm talking about this shit glorifying. I'm talking about changing my life. Let's, you know, Mayhem's a different man now. You know what I'm saying? Right. We're going to keep it 100 on what was going on when I was active. Y'all right. ain't finna just shine and try to act like we wasn't putting the punishment on you niggas. But now I'm, I'm a different person. And, right. and, 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 you know, all praise to God for me turning over a new leaf and learning how to, to do that. You feel me? Man, now, this is an unfortunate night, man. Um, it was uh, 4th of July, man. And uh, we're going to walk right over here to the action area. I wasn't here, but it was uh, somewhere in this area. Uh, we know who the shooter was. You know what I'm saying? We know who we lost. I was performing, my group was the professionals, and um, I had a group member that was from the other, his brother, and then was from the other side. It was a lifetime beef amongst these two cats, and all I know is, I knew there was some drama going on that night, because everybody popped up here to see everybody perform. And me and my brother and my wife, Kiana, and my brother's girl at the time, we left. The next morning I heard that we lost Lil Fats, man, a real soldier, man, my nigga. I still fuck with his brother and his sister to this day. You know what I'm saying? Rest his, rest his soul, man. But it happened over here, and from what I heard, that uh, they got into it. They came out here. He upped the gun on, on Cuz, shot him. Cuz took off running, and he shot him a couple more times in the back or something like that over here, man. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I will say this. They did catch the shooter two weeks later over north at the, at the force, no, at, uh, at uh, the 200. And they, they ended his life too. So when they killed him here, two weeks later, the shooter was dead too. You know, unfortunately, I knew both of the guys, you know what I'm saying? I had a relationship with both of the guys, you know what I'm saying? You know, if I could have been a real big homie and could have really had some power and could have made something happen, I wish I could have reversed that because we hurt two families, man, and two sides with two cats that used to be cool once upon a time. That's where this gang shit and this money shit separated a lot of people, man. Well, rest in peace to Lil Fat Cuz, one of the realest niggas out here, man. Real shit. There won't be nobody else like that nigga ever. Former Minnesota Governor Jesse Ventura doesn't buy it. In fact, he calls America's two-party system of government just a bunch of, quote, thugs in Brooks Brothers suits. That's offensive to Brooks Brothers suits. <laughs> <laughs> to associate them with Washington. That's a joke. Um, he's the author of the new book, Democrips and Rebloodlicans, No More Gangs in Government. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Christine. How are you today? I'm great. You know, it was a year ago, a little over a year ago, we were here with your last book. You are one prolific complainer about our two-party system. Well, I'm not a complainer. I just, uh, it, it doesn't require complaining. They've ruined our country. I mean, the Democrips and the Rebloodlicans have been in charge of this country for over a hundred years.
To the children who are viewing this film, do not allow yourself to be sucked in by the lies. And here's why. The biggest gang in this country is called the U.S. government. <laughs> I mean, think about it. Gang members sell drugs. But government sells bigger and better drugs. Gangs have their muscle. Government has their muscle. Gangs have colors. Government has colors. Gangs make money. Government makes more money. Gangs go to war with other gangs. Government goes to war with other countries. Like I said, do not allow yourself to be told any different. Street gangs operate under the same code as government. But we've all been brainwashed and misdirected to think that street gangs are hootlums and thugs and government is for the people. The only difference between street gangs and government gangs is one smiles at you while wearing a suit, but no one polices them. Me, myself, personally, I can, I can be a, a, a good example of what it means to not really believe that lifestyle can touch you till it touches you. Um, and I think that uh, sometimes it's those real critical moments where we had that decision making like to do or not to do and when we, you know, don't do, it's the things that ripple, the rippling effects that come from that, right? You know what I'm saying? The people that you meet, the places that you go, and real things that you, you know, healthy things that you engage in. And, and I understand that when I signed up, volunteered for the, the madness, you know what I'm saying? The self-inflicted nonsense, the sin of, you know what I'm saying? The turf. Um, and it was all voluntary. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't by force, <laughs> right? right? I, I chose that, right? Um, because it was all around me and that was the thing to do, right? Uh, but what I understand about making a different choice is, uh, when you do make those different choices, you'll be able to see that it's just just as beautiful of people around you and, you know what I'm saying, some great places you can go and some uh, very productive things that you can do. It's all the choice. It's a lifestyle choice. Um, and, and this is how I got to be in this seat. And this is how I got to be in the company of these individuals that I had to lose. One of my loved ones on my birthday. You know, and they always say that, you know, it's at 40 that you become successful. And it was on my 40th birthday that I lost my cousin right, to my lifestyle. Now I'm giving this real because I get to clean my face today, you know what I'm saying? And that's the, that's the beautiful thing about, you know what I'm saying, being alive and feeling because I understand one thing about the lifestyle, man, you don't feel nothing. There is no feeling, right? You don't care. It's a careless lifestyle. Right, whatever happens, man. I don't care as long as it don't affect me and mine. Right. Um, I'm thankful uh, to have made a different choice because that's what has me at this table. Um, I, I'm also thankful to not only in making that choice, but being firm in the decision that the stuff that I used to get, I don't want no more. Right. 
I don't want to get shot at no more. You know what I'm saying? 13 years of penitentiary, man, y'all can have that. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, you know what I'm saying? All the heartache and pain of individuals coming and going and you ain't even able to say bye. See, this is a lifestyle. This is something real. And when they come back around, the only ones that are successful are the ones who get out. Right? There is no 401, uh, there is no retirement for gangsters. There is no retirement for the dope man, the weed man, none of that. Go, we can, we can even pull up on our movies. The best of the bad got Scarface, right? Right. That's the best. Everybody want to be like Scarface and get that money in. You know what I'm saying? Even in the gangster movies, you know what I'm saying? Acapella, everybody, all of them. The end result is still the same. But individuals, we have a lot of individuals. Matter of fact, it's two of them on my shirt. That was a part of and seen something different and wanted to do something different. And they lived, right? They didn't die off and people forgot about them. That's what happens with the lifestyle. Change in the lifestyle. Choices. Either you're going to choose to be forgotten about or you're going to do something to choose to be remembered. When I didn't believe that I was going to be 30 years old, I lived a life of Bullshit, excuse my language. I mean, I was really living to die. Cause that's what they told me, like, nigga, you ain't gonna make it past 24. When I hit 29, I'm like, damn. I can no longer say I'm 20 something after today, cause I'm gonna be 30. And in my eyes back then, saying you was 30 meant that you was a man. And I grew up amongst men. You know, it's a whole different time right now. A lot of the men that's grown ain't even men. Because they never had the opportunity to be around real men when they was younger. So I mean, we a real unique generation that's still out here today that survived through that little 1991 and 2000-ish type era before we started having our kids and all this other fuckery started getting in play. And right. we got a duty to have these young people to understand, man, if it was a million of us in one place at one time with one dollar, guess what? We got a million dollars to make something happen off of one dollar. Hmm. So that's the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing. And if I don't have people coming along helping me, I'm not worried about it because I understand the power of self-wealth, man. Building wealth for myself the legit way. That's the reason why I like them people. I don't want to shoot nobody no more in the mix of running my business when I'm paying taxes for them to come up here and do their job. That's all I'm trying to say. I'm not worried, man. I got a permit to carry, a conceal to carry, and everything. When I was young on bullshit, thank God I never called a family to keep me from getting to that point. I never thought I'd be here, so all I'm saying is, man, don't throw your life away. Because it's a lot of people who made mistakes that they can't never erase and come back from. So basically what I'm trying to say is the mind fuckery systematically through wordplay of everything they did to us to have us degrade ourselves without us even understanding that we doing their work without them doing that at all. And I learned that reading this shit called Willie Lynch. And then I also read another, I read another book called Breaking the Chains of the Really, Really Lynch Cycle. And it really, really, really fucked me up because the, the situations we live and the way we are to each other, you know, if people will understand that that shit was by design and there was a plan to make money off of us, when it comes to this game of crack that we used to be involved in, man, they killed three generations at one time. They took me to jail. They took the parents away from the kids, and the kid was raised by the grandparent, and I mean, it was like the kid, the young man or woman, and the elder who they were selling the drug to, three generations of people, lives were destroyed, all in the fact of, you know, we thought that that was the only way out, the easy way out, and um, didn't know what the impact of that was gonna be. So one of the reasons why I keep it so real with my walk and my talk, and when a little shorty talk about put me on, I ask them do they want a job application or a high school registration, cause ain't nothing really coming out of that other part of life. Kind of, I, I was, I, I can say I was, I was kind of lost, wanted to belong to something, wanted to be a part of something, was seeking love. You know, and that's where I found it, it was in the streets with, with my folks, you know what I'm saying? And them the ones that kind of guided me and was, was the father figure in my life, you know what I'm saying? Now that I'm older, and I, I can, to experience some of the things they were trying to teach me and show me. Right, right. It kind of make me a different person now, as far as being a better person, even being with like my man here. Right. It kind of helped me older in my life, you know what I'm saying? It took a lot of anger about me and everything I'm grateful for.
I really appreciate it. Right, right. And I feel like that's what it's about. That's exactly. That really, really helped. You know, and that, that's what we're trying to do now, is help, help other brothers. I feel like we need to be a concept of one people, man. Right. We're up against the system right yeah, now, man. And all, all the brothers that's from here that's doing something, really need to step out here on these, in these streets, because that's where the power is. The power is with the people, man. It's with the people. I wish brothers, you know what I'm saying, are gone, come, you know, come out of the summer, man, see if we can get something down, get something together, man, we can stop a lot of this killing that's going on right now. Right. You know, I was a part of a lot of things when I was younger. They called me a murder case, but I had to run my head, you know, to get straight to really understand that taking somebody's life was a serious thing. Right. So instead of taking life, I'm going to save lives. I'm right. telling to all my brothers that know me from back then to come holler with me so we can try to make a difference. Right. And that's basically all I got to say. Okay. You know, I love the streets. Let me just say this. I grew up in the streets. Even when I was a little boy, I started a little bicycle gang. And all we did was ride around and steal stuff. I mean, I, I love the streets. I, I, I mean, I, I love the streets. And so once, once God got control of my life, and I couldn't go on the streets because I wasn't selling no dope, because I wasn't, you know, there was nothing for me to do on the streets. I, I was I was kind of stuck, and I was like, I want to go back on the streets, but I I want to do something mm. on the streets. I mean, because that's really where my heart is. And so I started a group called Black on Black Love, right? Mm. And and even then, when I started that in in '95, you know, uh, the brothers was telling me, man, you know, you know, you're in Minnesota. White folks don't really want to hear you talk about. <laughs> Black on black love, right. you know, that you, you should change it to block on block love. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, wow. you know, I said, well, block on block love. And, you know, I mean, I like the black on black. But anyway, I, I met Art Erickson, and he said, hey, man, I got a little, it's a little room in the back, back there, man. I see you out there on the streets. You know, there's this group called Mad Dads, you know. What do you think about starting the Mad Dads here in Minnesota? I said, it's cool, man, because so they want to change the name to Block on Block Love. I let, <laughs> I let them have that. And, you know, when I left, they was running around with the uniform on with six packs of beer on their shoulder. You know, the kind of love you give in the block, right? Right, right. So I started Mad Dad's in a little room, and I was working for the airline. And I had a job that was uh, it was terrible. It was actually cleaning toilets. It was, But every weekend, I would hit the block. And I loved it, man. I mean, I was looking for brothers that wanted to hit the block with me, but everybody had their hand out. Well, how much does that pay? I said, I don't pay nothing, but, you know, you get the, the feeling of helping somebody, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I started right in the neighborhood, working with the Bloods, and, you know, and I'd get my broom, and i say, man, I'm here to clean up the neighborhood and you. They said, you're here to do what? I said, I'm here to, to help you out. They said, good, man. We see the police come and let us know. <laughs> <laughs> so... It wasn't long enough before I began to build relationships. Some of them would die, I'd be there. Some of them would go to jail, I'd show up. Mm. You know, and I continued to do that and continued to do that and continued to do that and stayed on that rim until one day I had to call my job and say, you know, I'm so busy doing this stuff that I could no longer even work here no more. That I, I have created a, a organization and a 501c3 and a business that allows me to work in this community. Mm. And then I continue to build on that and continue to build on that and continue to build on that until uh, nationally I was recognized for other leaders across the country. They put me on the national board and I began to help start chapters in Iowa and other places all over the mm. country. And, and, and so as a national leader, it began to show me that there is a whole world that needs this kind of support. So I was, I was blessed. It just a cat that said, I want to be back on the block, man. I want to be back on the street. So a lot of times guys will say, man, he don't know nothing about being no gang banger. He wasn't no banger. He wasn't this. He wasn't that. Right, that's right. that's an old country nigga. Man, nigga don't know nothing about right. this and that. Because they ain't supposed to know nothing about it. I'm telling, I'm sharing some history with y'all. I don't share that all the time because they don't need to know. While they was running around doing signs and clicking and mobbing, I was delivering dope, man. I was getting money. Right. I didn't have time for that. I was I was flying to Kansas City and New York and handling business. Right. Okay, and we was taught not to do all that. Right. We don't brag, so I was never braggadocious anyway. I like the hoopy. If I wanted a brand new Lincoln, I rented one. I like to keep everything down low because I found that that those were the guys that had a little bit more longevity. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. right. And I just wanted a little bit more of the longevity. <laughs> That's all. I just wanted to be able to do a little bit longer. I knew I couldn't do it forever. Right. But let me do it for a little bit longer. <laughs> so, <laughs> so when I see the OGs from Minnesota, like, man, he wasn't. No, no, no not to you. I ain't nobody. Because right. I wasn't supposed to be nobody to you. Right. But your homies was the ones that snitched on me and got my ribs cracked over on the north side because I was <laughs> getting big over there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. So it's okay. I'm not I'm not mad. I'm you know, I'm not mad. I don't because I don't promote that part of my life anyway. It's just yes. it's yeah. a part of yeah. the history that made me who I am today. Right. So when you wonder where where did I come from, yeah. Folks start asking, where you come from, man? How did you just show up? You know, it was un I didn't have any problems with any folks, especially black folks, right. until the foundation started saying, did you ask VJ? <laughs> uh, when you start saying <laughs> to, to yeah, some right. other black folks, did you ask VJ or did you ask Emmanuel? Did you ask KG? Did you ask, did you, did you guys ask Miss McKnight? <laughs> That's when other black folks started saying, ask them for what? Exactly. Right. We gonna, right. we gonna, now, now that you said the name, we're going to make it hard on them. Mm -hmm. Everybody you just mentioned, we're going to make it a little tight on them. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah. so I had no problems. Things were going smooth until other folks started saying, did they ask me? I would have told them, no, they ain't going to ask me. <laughs> That's real. That's real, though. <laughs> uh, so, so I started this out of just a mission to get it out. Everybody had, is affected by everything that their family members do, whether it's positive or negative, okay? Mm -hmm. Because, for instance, you didn't have to choose. That was a lifestyle that you chose. You could have you could have chose to go the other direction, but it was boring. It wasn't exciting. You wanted to be like everybody else because if you hadn't, you wouldn't have took that route. Anything that contributes to death, to misery, I'm seeing young people uh, dying, losing their lives. What kind of legacy is that? Leaving children behind, fatherless children. That's true. Mother, uh, we, we, black women need their black men. And as long as y'all can't play the game or refuse to play the game or whatever it is you want to call it, sisters is going to be raising children alone or other men going to come in and be raising your children. It, it, that's, that's not positive. Nobody raising my wait, 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 no, that's, that's not positive. Everybody, everybody has to learn. There is no one that has not done something that 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 they're not ashamed of that they that they don't want to talk about. But there comes a point in time in your life to where it's, you need to <clears throat> lay down the bullshit and get with the real shit. Hmm. Because the white man got laws for people who like to intimidate by threatening and guns and weapons and all that. They know how to deal with that. But when you can speak their language and walk they walk and talk they talk, they can't handle that. So we need to go back to old school. We need to have a little bit of everything all up in the mix. All this intimidation and, okay, so you want, why the hell are you wearing your pants down so the crack of your ass is showing? Wait, 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 no, I didn't say that you, but no. I mean, really, what do, what, what's up with that? I mean, really, back in the day, if you was doing some shit like that, you would get paid. What's the purpose? Well, I mean, really, we need to learn to play. We own nothing. We don't own no media. A few of us do. But you know what? When you see them, are they dressed like that? What kind of images are, do you see them doing? I mean, look at 50 Cent. Look how he started. Look what he look like now. Because <laughs> he wants to keep moving up and he, keep, he wants to keep stacking. All right? And that's the way you got to do it. You got to play the game until you get enough money in your pockets to where your pockets is deep enough to where if you want to go around and do what you do then you can be like Don King and wear we your hair live. You know, I'm and wear your models. hair all over your head you know, don't make, <laughs> well, we you know what I'm saying? Saying? I'm but when he talk, no seriously but when he talk he speaks proper why is it we born in this country and we can't speak a proper sentence you know it's like everybody else come to this country and move up except for us and we still sit back talking about, I ain't going to do that. All right? 
And then we get mad at the Somali, we get mad at the African because they come and they get the money and they make the money. Why? Same vacant building. We still on the bus stop. They moving up, they buying, they come together to do things. We don't. That's all I got to say. I would say, in a summary, uh, my mother's choice of the type of man she chose to be with is what subjected our lives to everything that we experienced. And in that, I have a brother doing 27 years in prison and one in the cemetery. And um, there's a whole other bunch of fractions there. But we ain't, I'm not talking from a sideline. I'm talking from direct life experience. And I want to especially say to the young ladies, um, <laughs> it's real. And our choices do matter. Um, let me just go back and say how I made that shift is that I had different friends. And I can, and I have different friends now. But I can, I can tell you that um, I had a set of friends who they was about that life. Females, I'm talking about I dated guys who was leading gangs. Okay? I dealt with the core of the, the biggest dope dealers who supplied the corner dudes. So we're not talking about just some little guys who try to, no, I'm talking about the deals. And in that, um, I also had friends, those were my friends at the same time. That was my cool spot. I also had friends who didn't know much about that. But their mama was on crack, my mom was an alcoholic, their mom was crackheads. Um, we wanted something different out of life. My choices was to hang out with the gang straight up from Chicago, Detroit, dope, dope boys, dope girls, or to be with these little, uh, little, little what we call whack or, or nerd Minnesota Ooh. kids um, <laughs> who was uh, chilling and their parents was just on crack, but they didn't really know a whole bunch about that life, but they wanted something different. So I met up with, one, with a girl from um, junior high school whose mom was on crack and she was struggling. And, and we latched on to each other, and we helped each other get through what we was going through. That's the only way I made it out. It was peer-to-peer -peer support. It wasn't nothing else. It was her and me, and her drive was stronger than mine. She taught me what I never knew. My mom didn't teach me a lot of stuff. I didn't know anything about personal hygiene, none of that. Okay, We got $50 a month. We had to buy a whole school clothes for the year with that. <laughs> That's how they wrote. I'm 100% involved and raised the seven kids. Yep. My oldest has graduated high school, never been involved in nothing illegal. Right. Uh, my son is 16, gangs, street life has never even been an option for him. Mm. I had a lot to do with that. All right. I've been coaching park board for this is my 14th year. Wow. 14th year, that's Spending time with, communicating with, trying to build mm -hmm. hundreds of young black kids, adolescents, teenagers, and now men. Right. At the same time, if it ain't cats like us that's been there and done that, that's gonna tell them, hey, if you're gonna click, be with your click, everybody clicks up. Doctors, nurses, lawyers, everybody yep. clicks up. Yep. It's about what you do with your click that's gonna make it right or wrong. Right. You know? I'm gonna start by saying uh, a quote that uh, one of my elders and mentors in Chicago said years ago, and his name is uh, Philip Jackson. He's the president of the Black Star Project there. He said to us uh, some years ago, gang members and all that, when I'm still active gang members, he came out and spoke to us. He said, educate or die. Educate or die. Um, and that stuck inside of me. Um, you know, coming from the gang, same gang that uh, Sister Kenya was in, uh, Hearing that same misinformation, uh, to me, uh, seeing later on that it was misinformation that came from misinformed people that were misinformed by misinformed people, where it went from generation to generation to generation, 
and left uh, men and women uh, doing life sentences on death row, this one from where I come from, and filling up the cemeteries daily. So if that's your choice, young man, young sister, if these are your choices that you you are planning on and you're looking at, then uh, please, if you're a youth and with no job and no insurance, please let your mom know to prepare herself for burying you. Um, like Sister Kenya said, uh, you need to find out how to plan your future because there is no future in, in the gang banging uh, but a, a quick early cemetery. Uh, that lifestyle will have circumstances and outcomes where grandmama will be burying her grandchild. This is what we are seeing now on a daily basis. Uh, Sister Kenya said it so well. Back in the days, we, we could feel like some type of family or something like that because uh, 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 we had laws, we had policies, we had uh, format, we had structure back then where we had to follow. Like uh, BJ said, how uh, we couldn't do certain things. We had to respect our elders, you know, and, and different things like this. We couldn't rob people in our community. We wasn't doing that. And so, but today it has changed. There is no structure and you are uh, uh, putting yourself uh, on death row. And I'm going to say this real quick. I went to the juvenile home uh, about a couple years ago and I asked the, the, the young juveniles in, uh, in the juvenile home, I said, um, do you all know what death row is? And they said, yeah. And I said, uh, so do you have death row here in, in, in Minnesota, which I knew they did, but I wanted to see what they were saying. They said, uh, no, we don't have that here. I said, well, where I come from in Chicago, they have death row. I said, uh, I said, let me see all of y'all that, that said y'all was in a game. And all of them lifted their hands. I said, for all of y'all that just lifted your hands, you didn't even know. But like me, used to be, you on death row. Right now. Your days are numbered. Your days are numbered. And so, like, like all of them just said, man, and Kenya said it so well, find out how to start living and stop dying. For real. If you have to change your association, your affiliation, and I'm going to tell you, this is something really real. You might have to stay away from some family members. Because if your family members is trying to die and you trying to live, something ain't right there. Something ain't right there. You see us, we're here, we're on this camera, pleading to you right now, not just saying something we're showing you with our lives, because anybody can talk and say anything. But we're pleading to you that we've done. Kenya said it. We didn't have people run up on us with guns. We've been shot. Some of us got bullet wounds. Ribs broke. We've done it for you already. We've done that for you. We don't. We got the scars to prove it. She said we got the GD tattoos, all that garbage. But today, since we survived it because of the grace of the Creator, and I believe it's only for us to be here today uh, and continue to get this message of hope and change. To change your direction and your mindset. Because the ones at this table that's telling you this. If you don't listen. Receive this information and instruction. And wisdom and knowledge and understanding. We probably will be right with your parents. Side by side. Holding them. Consoling them. Saying we did a video. We went to the schools. We went to the jails. We went to the blocks. We did everything we could. To get a message to your child. Fix me for
question was about um, my expectations for the ex gang members or whatever that you're going to be interviewed um, is don't glorify the life of violence. This ain't your moment of fame to um, talk about how rough and tough you was and is. Be real. Be vulnerable. Um, this is your moment to heal and to be real with our babies about why you chose to be in that life. What was really going on in your world. right? This isn't about promoting um, toughness to them. This is about being strong, which means you need to be vulnerable mm -hmm. and tell them the truth of what showed, what made you get to that point in your life. And most times it was because you was lacking something that you was fine looking for. Mm -hmm. So um, I would just say be real with them. Do not glorify the culture of violence um, or even the, the whole egomaniac, tough, rough, puffed up, false manhood mm -hmm. or womanhood for that matter, um, but to be real and know that we're trying to save lives, not take more, and that this is your moment of healing, which means you have to be vulnerable. I, don't, I didn't care to talk about some of my family business, but if I wanted to be honest and help somebody see some real specific things that may connect to their life, I had to tell, talk about it. Right. So I have that same expectation of you, and um, I just... We have the power. These young people look up to us, and um, our truth is what's going to help them. So, once again, um, thank you for making it to the other side and for agreeing to be a part of this documentary um, of truth telling about our realities. And I know a lot of people think because we're in Minnesota that it ain't real and we fake it all of that. I get it. <laughs> you ain't got nothing to prove. Believe me. <laughs> we know that our life is real. Um, but I ask you, beg you, encourage you um, to be okay with being vulnerable and tell the truth about the things you're able to talk truthfully about um, in a way that's going to help our baby see the real in it and to make different choices and to think about the fact that some of you, us are parents now. We're aunties and uncles now, and we want different things for the young people in our lives, right? So that same thing we want for our children, our nieces, our nephews, our friends, babies and things, is what we are here, we should be giving today to this camera. Um, and that's my expectation, is that. Okay. What I, what I see, for me, I think life is based on choices. You make bad choices, bad choices can complicate your life to death or the penitentiary. Um, what I have to tell young brothers, I would tell them to think before they react. Think before you react. Um, pick a good circle of people to be around with. You, you know, um, I was forced to this lifestyle because I had brothers that was being attacked and me being the oldest, my, my mom raised us to stick together and I just had no choice. And, and as I stuck with my brothers, we came around our mans, our homies. And when we came around our homies, they beef was our beef. You know, you, right. you love somebody, you're around them every day. How me, Rossi, and Cool, he and Rest of Soul. A lot of, I could go down the list for all the homeboys who've been killed in this nonsense, you know? Yeah. And um, I loved my people. And it, when, when something happened to them, it made you want to react. You're going to be with them to the end. Win, lose, or draw. You, you with your people. But um, I never want my son to ever go through what I've been through. I don't want him to witness the penitentiary. I don't want him to be shot in the streets. I want him to grow up educated. I want him to be sounded with God. I want him to be around good people. And um, I think this will be a, I think this video will be a good thing for black men to know that even though the negativity, we turn it down around to positivity and we alive, we here, we alive. Because we got friends who's been killed. I got a little homie since I've been home that's scary, that been killed, man, and ain't no coming back from that. Life is based on choices, man. You, some bad choices you can come back from, some you can't come back from. So what I got for you young brothers, man, is put those pistols down, man, because this is not the type of town you want to be in activating it. There was a time in the year from 90, 89 to 93, there's a time you can walk up out here, man, it'd be a hundred addicts out here. 
and we would live out here. Everybody that's out here, that, that we, we would be out here. We lived out here. We thought it was going to be forever. And the reality is, we was tricking ourselves. We, we, it just, I have so many thoughts in my head. I could just talk and talk and talk, but man, it just, I, I know this, this lifestyle ain't what it is, but memories are good to go on. Cause it was some good times in here as well as bad times. Right. You know, I think the good times, a lot of the good times outweigh the bad times. That's why it's kind of tough for some homies to deal with certain things. You know what I mean? Right. Like my brother, you know what I'm saying? On the shirt right there. You know, he been down, he coming up on 20 years. You know what I'm saying? So, wow. Not to. I mean, it's portrayed, well, at least when we were growing up, it was portrayed as being a part of something, a family, protection. Right. In most cases, money. Right. It's not it. You can get all that from our Lord and Savior and working hard. Right. Amen. It's not the life. It's okay. Not the life. You want to add to it? Amen. Everything she said, just piggyback off of what she said. It, it's not worth it. It's not worth your life. You got to think about not only just yourself, but you got to think about the people who love you. You know what I'm saying? And and it, it's you know, thank God we we able to stand here today and talk about it. Right. But um, a lot are not here and can't talk about it. But it, it truly is not worth it. Right. Right. My point that I'm proving is that I'm going to put two and maybe two other sons of mine through college if they want to go. I know two is going for sure, but they in my household. But I'm giving the other two options that's not in my household if they want to go to college. I, I'm not going to let them wave the guns like that. Right. It's more to it. They can beat the streets with a college degree. That's how they're going to do that. Basically, I surveyed apartments. I used to survey the streets. Isn't that ironic? You know what I'm saying? Um, basically, I make sure the youth is in order. I make sure people outside is doing the right things in the parks and in the building. You know, I talk to the youth based on, man, what do they see they sell three, four, five years down the line? Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm, I'm mentor slash big brother slash father. I'm implementing my vision for them, for their own lives. You know, telling them that they got purpose. Telling them who the God is that I serve. Teaching them, man, that you know what, man, this looks good. And all this out here is a mirage, man, but at the end of the night, man, it doesn't have to end this way. You know, just, just, just going out here doing what I do. Then I work at my church. You know what I'm saying? Um, got a leadership academy. I'm raising up young leaders. Not to go up, go to college. That, yeah, that's one of the things that I'm doing. But not just that, man. I want them to go off, go, go to college, become successful, man. But at the end of the night, man, I want them to come back and impact their own communities. Because right. a lot of times we raise up leaders and we teach them how to run away from the problem instead of dealing with it. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So this is, this is what I'm doing. By me being the example. By me saying, man, I done been through hell and hot water. You know, by me letting them know, man, that I used to want to be a police officer. I used to want to be a lawyer. I chose this lifestyle, and I got influenced by this lifestyle. But at the end of the night, this is the end outcome of it. Now I'm a pastor. You know what I'm saying? I'm preaching the word of God. You know what I'm saying? And I'm letting them know, man, to get God now. Get him now. Yeah, you're going to go out and make a mistake the next day, the next month, the next week. But get him now. Because if you get him now, he's able to change you. You know what I'm saying? We got God when we were kids. But this is the law to see. Everything that we went through from the gang banging, the gun slanging, the dope dealing, you know what I'm saying, the violence, you know, whatever we did in these communities, at the end of the night, God had planted a seed in us about eight, nine years old. Places like uh, uh, House Brutality House, uh, uh, what was that, Four, Fourth Baptist, yep. up there on Broadway. Yep. You know what I'm saying? These are the programs that we used to go to as kids and we still got out here in the streets, but for some odd reason, God stayed faithful to us. And now he made us men of God. You know what I'm saying? Out of the lifestyle that we live. We lived a rough lifestyle. I don't care. Cat can say what they want to say after this interview. Once you edit it or whatever you got to do. At the end of the night, Northside, y'all know what's going on. Right. Let's be real. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, so my thing is this. I love the Northside. I love Minneapolis. I love the Twin Cities, Big Meech. I ain't gonna leave you out, man. You know you my man. You feel what I'm saying? I still got love for the night, mom. 
But my thing is this. I love the St. Paul all the time. My thing is this. Northside, St. Paul, Twin Cities, real talk. Stand up. Stand up. Our kids need some men. Our kids need some men. They need some examples. Quit saying your baby mama tripping. You tripping. She need a man. You feel me? Stand up. God bless. There's a thin line between love and hate. Very thin line, motherfucker. Your bitch crosses that line. <laughs> she gets fucked. Fuck that friend. If you, my friend, cross the line, you get fucked over. <laughs> I think I'm going crazy, crazy. Like I done lost my mind. my mind Even my thoughts betray me betray. It's hard to think sometimes That line, that line. Don't cross that line. that line Don't cross that line Don't cross that line Cause a nigga might draw star fine Turn this bitch in a column down Don't, don't cross that don't Why they wanna test the waters with a monster? Like you looking for a log nest? Huh? Roll your little bitty boat down the stream I'ma wet you up Hope you brought a life vest Uh Don't cross that line That's a thin one Turn a goofy to a Movie in the Astra, where you stand, I need you. Fast forward right through the preview, straight to your ending. Yes. Exercise, the fifth amendment with the four five. Like I'm lifting, yeah. nigga, we can take a ride, play chicken. Get you deep fried, no size or a biscuit. I ain't with the murder mouth and a jaw jacket. True shit, loose lips get two trips. How you want a hospital with a mortis cremation or burial? Take your pick. Survival was vital, I'm peaceful, but people will try you. I lay suicidal, a cycle, you cost me, it's costly. Caution, I'm strapped like a car seat, it's with an reach. Dead on arrival, that made the block hot, turn it to Palm Beach. Nobody saw me, walk away calmly. No one I got enough money to pay my attorney yes. I think I'm going crazy, crazy. <laughs> Like I done lost my really mind Even nigga. my thoughts betray me <laughs> It's hard to think sometimes That line, don't cross that line Don't cross that line, don't cross that line, don't cross that line. Don't cross that line. Cause a nigga might draw star fan Turn this bitch in a column down Don't cross that line Coach, the fuck going on, man? Still in the hood, loading up his Pussy niggas to the doctor Niggas know that they can't stop On the north side DJ Cortez, side, turn up And I got robbers for your robbers Strapped up, niggas can't rob us Cashing out, don't choose and rob us Kick out, this she don't top us A few meal, what a nigga worth I'ma hit you niggas where it hurts don't talk to bitches if they too thirst My flag the same color as a smurf Riding for and so the bitches diggy Hitting legs for a half a ticky Fuck stacking them a going spendy Cause I don't know how long I'ma be living Hold up Yeah This is another basement production Yeah, you heard it Hold up Yeah, yeah, I'm in these streets, man. Yeah, 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 every day. Yeah, 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 yeah. I heard I ain't got no money, huh? I ain't doing my thing. I don't be smoking kush. I don't be in my lane. I don't post on the north side. Be out there with my chain. And my watch on and my ring. Don't mean not to do my thing. I heard all these niggas been lying. Yeah. Waiting on me to fall. What? They say I ain't balling. You ain't seen me out at the mall. See me then? Lying like a motherfucker. You know a creep when I crawl. I crawl. And any time that you want it. I come for it all. Give it, I got bricks all on my table. My table. Bricks under my flow. My flow. Bricks all on my ceiling. ceiling. Brick squad, I'm looking for more. Let go. That's how the shit gon' go. Don't go. Said one time, I said twice. twice. I don't gamble with my life. Nah, nah. They say I ain't living my life. And they say I ain't got no money. Scratch. I ain't got no ends. They say I ain't draw no money. Shit. I ain't draw no beans. They say Boogie ain't my nigga. Huh? And I ain't got no friends. Well, this where all that stops. And that's where all that ends Listen, listen I ain't got time for the bullshit Listen, I ain't got time for the bullshit Listen, I ain't got time for the bullshit Listen, I ain't got time for the bullshit
Eyes on my eyelids, made it out the game. Everybody look what I did. Since I put the pack down, don't know how to act now. Got my old clientele stressed out and pissed off. Still pull the best out. Who's acting silly? Yeah, feels no me. I ain't good with the million. I ain't with all that beef, and I'd rather have a chit chat. Don't get it twisted, I still make it. Please hate to get back, find a new route Plot no ox to tell the truth ain't what it's all about I'd rather get dope, lay up by beat Smoke show, get money, everything on me Y'all fools knew me, you couldn't get it to the key I was highball taxing, they was paying 23 Had to get off the scene, heard the fans was gon' knock Now I'm rapping about my past life, beating down the block I rock the big dumb chains, Cartier brains Everybody know me, you know I'm a fucking nervous. I'm coming straight out the speaker box in the three hundred as I see. Took a little vacay straight back like some yo. Had to call a timeout, little goose with my Gatorade. Back like the big ticket, pull up on him like a meter man. Doing all these things, flexing on Lex. I was 15, maybe 16, had 17 shots in that room. Hold up, I'm back for them haters who sit right the worst on a nigga. Right the worst on a nigga. And they feelings big mad, cause I really don't fuck with these niggas. I don't fuck with these niggas, man. Not a little, not at all. Pussy nigga, where you panning? Where you panning? See him shooting in his post. He don't really want smoke. We gon' come and visit Grand. And he know it. While these niggas dissing, I'm praying and wishing they mention me, nigga. Don't mention me. As quick as them bitches hit sin, I be coming to bend on them niggas. Flex, 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 flexing on them. Randy Savage. Randy, motherfucker. I was 15, spit a 16. Put 17 niggas in the cast. Woo! I was sticking moving like cash. Round, round, got a ruler and some plastic. What? Old school, high speed through the north side coast on the truck. Little Chevy about to blow a gas. Chevy flexing through the ghetto. Say from the north side, boy, which one? Cause I ain't never seen these niggas in the ghetto. I'm from the city where they pop up at your door like hello. Home trust the soul, snakes in the garden, so I'm shooting like mellow. Shooting like mellow. I told my niggas, sit back, got this bitch in the bag. Tell these rap niggas I'm back on their ass. Thirds on the chain, bitch, I'm back in my bag.